From the Maryville University Hockey Center, game two of three getting underway momentarily as the Maryville University Saints Division I team not only continues their uh, winning ways after defeating Waldorf University last night by a final score of 2-1 to one to begin the 2022 portion of the season. I'll be taking them on tonight in their senior night as well. I'm Sean Malone alongside Todd Panula. Todd, last night, Maryville did walk away with the 2-1 to one victory. What were your thoughts following that game? It was kind of a disjointed game, but that was somewhat to be expected given the fact that uh, it was their first game out of the gate after the semester break. We talked about it during the broadcast last night to where they were supposed to have a couple games against Illinois State right out of the shoot in January. They were supposed to play Northern Illinois uh, due to the COVID protocols. Neither of those series ended up happening, so... They, they go almost all the way till the end of January before they get back on the ice with their previous last game being early in December. And you could kind of tell. They, they had had some practices. Coach Hogan talked about it in his post game to where they had had some good practices. But sometimes when you hit the ice, things just don't click right away. And I think we saw that with Maryville. Uh, Coach wasn't necessarily as pleased with the effort level that he wanted to see coming out of the gate. But ultimately, you end up with two points. You end up with a victory. It wasn't necessarily how they drew it up, but if you end up ahead at the end of the night, you can't complain as much. Yeah, I think Maryville might have gotten a little lucky that a performance like that came against Waldorf University. They're now 7-16-1 and one on the season following that loss last night. If you have that against some of the higher competition Maryville has played throughout the season, they may not come away with the victory. They may actually be on the wrong end of a really ugly score on the scoreboard. I asked Coach Hogan earlier today about that, and uh, he said exactly what you said. They didn't really play his style of hockey. And I asked him to follow up of, uh, do you attribute that to being first game back after a long extended break? And he said, your guess is as good as mine. So we'll see if Maryville can respond and play his style of hockey in this game against Waldorf University for their second of two games against them this weekend. But you talk about the extended break that Maryville had. Yeah, their last game was on December the 4th. They played before that on December the 3rd, but then there was the Thanksgiving break. Last time they played before that was November 20th. Maryville went a two-month stretch while only playing two hockey games. That is a lot of time away from hockey, and there's a big difference between you know facing off against people that are on your team in practice versus another team that's got varsity-level players that you're playing against, first-line-level players that you're first-line is playing against. It's a, a long stretch for Maryville that they went through to not play any hockey against anybody else. Yeah, it's one of those situations. You hear it in hockey, you hear it in football, uh, lots of different sports to where they, they have a situation where you get sick of seeing each other. You want to see somebody else so that you can go out there and kind of beat up on somebody else. And uh, it's a, a situation to where I think Maryville themselves, if they look in the mirror, they won't be pleased with what they did last night. They got the win. They'll be happy with that. But they can do so much better. They, they can be more physical than we saw last night. They can do more on the offensive end. Obviously, you'd love to have more goals, but just the offensive flow wasn't quite there. And I think if they, they come out here hard tonight, play a Maryville style, as you mentioned, Coach Hogan's style of hockey, then the scoreline should be quite a bit different. But that's why you go out and you play the games because uh, these games aren't won and lost on paper. Yeah, you mentioned the goal scoring from Maryville. That might be one of the more disappointing parts of this game. Is that is the first time since their uh, shootout loss to Iowa State on October the 23rd that they did not score three-plus goals in a game. The only other time that happened since then was their last game, seen on at that time the number one team in the country in Lindenwood University. Understandable, the scoring may not be there against an opponent like Lindenwood, but, you know, the standard of Maryville offense that has been there this year certainly wasn't there last night. Yeah, they, they're a high-flying team. They like to get in, pressure on the forecheck. 
make teams make mistakes, and they really didn't do that to Waldorf last night. I think the Warriors got too much opportunity, time, and space to get comfortable. You still saw a little bit of the disparity in the talent levels, thus Maryville getting the win, but they allowed the Warriors to hang around far too long, and I'm not trying to take any credit away from Waldorf because they're a, a Division I hockey team. You, they, they have talented players. They're just not as deep as Maryville is. They're not as good at the top level as Maryville is. And the Saints kind of let them hang around a little too long. And I think that's what was nerve-wracking from the Saints' perspective is this game was in doubt all the way until the end. You would expect it, even though it's a conference matchup, and those always tend to be a little bit more difficult than your run-of-the-mill uh, game against a, a team that's under 500 you would still expect the scoreline to be a little bit more in Maryville's favor before the last couple minutes. After the game last night, we spoke with Maryville University head coach John Hogan in his fourth season. Let's take a look at that conversation now. I'm here with Coach Hogan. Coach, a new day, a new game. What are you expecting out of the boys tonight? Yeah, it's senior night, so it should be a fun day and a, a lot to recognize and a lot to be proud of. So I think uh, just hopefully a lot of effort and, and tenacity to our game today. You mentioned senior night. This is the first senior class to graduate. Just how proud of you are are you of these uh, these guys that have come through this program? Yeah, the, it's, uh, it, standing here, the things that we've accomplished the, in a new building and things of that nature, it's it's unbelievable what this group has done the last four years. So, like I said, a lot to be proud of, and uh, they really set the foundation and the stage for us to do some really special things this year uh, and in the future. So, I cannot be more proud and thankful and. Uh, the trust, the commitment, and everything they've done for us. Looking at tonight's game, taking on Waldorf once again, trying to get the sweep, what are you expecting to see out of them tonight? Yeah, I think what what they are, it, they are what they are, and they, they, they compete hard. They do a lot of good things well. Um, they, they don't give you a lot of time and space out there. So they're a much improved team, and I think uh, we kind of took them for granted yesterday. So uh, hopefully – uh, the respect is a two-way street, and, and we uh, compete a lot harder tonight because uh, they're a good hockey team over there. Uh, from a systems perspective, is anything changing, or what are we expecting to see uh, on the ice from your team? Yeah, we're back to 12 forwards and 7D, so a little more flow, uh, hopefully a little more connectivity out of our group today. And there's things that we're trying to work on and improve on, so um, hopefully our breakouts and you know some of our structure, uh, you know, forecheck and, and those things, we need to clean up those things. So. Saw it on film, and now we have to go execute it. Last night, 2-1 victory. Expecting to maybe get the legs back under you guys, first time playing in the new year. How important is this game to elevate your game going forward in the second half? You know, they're they're big conference games, so you got to take care of the points there. And we got McKendry next week, and then there's not a lot of time left. So we got to get going here. We got to find our game because uh, if we continue to try to find our game and, and we can't find it, it's going to be the end of the year. Um, so, so we got to find it now. We have to, uh, you know, be comfortable in our game and, and, and work on some things. So come February, March, we're ready to go. So uh, now's the time to, to do all those things, to execute properly, to play the right way. So I'm um, excited about what, what, what we're going to see tonight. Coach, good luck tonight. And, uh, well, happy new year. Yep, yep. thank you. That was our own Andrew Marsh, joined by the head coach of the Maryville Saints, John Hogan. We talked about how he didn't play or Maryville didn't play his standard of hockey and that Waldorf was really the team that had more energy. I guess you could, they kind of played more John Hogan style hockey than Maryville did, which, as I said, kind of feels like it's, you know, considering the opponent lucky draw that they were playing them and not a team of a higher caliber that potentially could have run up the score against Maryville if they're bringing out that kind of an effort. Yeah, the, the Warriors, they came out and they, they, they wanted to point, prove a point, excuse me, uh, they came out, they were physical, they didn't necessarily have the size to match up with Maryville in that aspect, but they played up to their capabilities. They went in, they, they dug in along the walls, they were winning puck battles, and as you've said a couple times, if it's a, a higher caliber team, I think that that game ends up with potentially a different result if Maryville plays the same way that they did. Um, and it's hard to speculate as to whether or not that might happen because Maryville, in the back of their mind, you can always say no matter what that you're, you're, you're amped up, you want to play, you want to get out there and get the result. These guys are, are not dumb. They know what the opponent's records are going into a lot of these things. And whether you, you want to wipe the ice with them or you just want to kind of skate through, 
that that kind of ends up just in the back of your mind. It's a subconscious thing, and sometimes the body betrays the mind. So you can tell yourself, like, hey, I need to hustle a little bit more. And sometimes your body just doesn't want to do it. And I think that might have been what we had with Maryville yesterday. And to Coach Hogan's point, he's hoping to see more physicality. If nothing else, I'd like to see Maryville answer a little bit more because Maryville took the body when they had the opportunity and they were smart. They didn't take penalties very much. We only had one power play throughout the entire game yesterday. But on the flip side, for every hit that Waldorf threw, you'd like to see an answer by Maryville. And there really wasn't an answer a lot of times. They kind of allowed the Warriors to do whatever they wanted. And then if a hit presented itself, they would take that. I'd like to see the Saints come out. If they get hit, answer right away. Not necessarily in a dirty or a cheap way, but let them know that you're there. Don't don't just sit there and be a pushover and say, it's like, oh, yeah, that was a good hit. Now let's carry on. It's like, no, you got to stick up for yourselves a little bit more than I think they did yesterday. Yeah, I'm really looking for Maryville to bring the physicality early in this game. I always like teams that bring the physicality early because I always say it's easier to start with the physicality versus pull it out of you if you haven't started that way already. But especially, like you said, to wake them up from last night's game. So I'm curious what Coach Hogan or some of the other leaders on this team, you, know, you look to Jack Harrison, who's a great two-way player for Maryville, what they're going to do to try to wake up this Maryville squad and bring that physicality and that high level of energy that they expect night in and night out. Besides Coach John Hogan last night, we also talked with Brad Boudreau about senior night and last night's game as well. We'll take a look at that interview. I'm Andrew Marsh here with Maryville forward Brad Boudreau. Brad, first game back from the new year. You guys win two to one, congrats. What'd you see out of the team last night? I thought for taking almost two months off, I thought we played pretty well. Um, definitely could have capitalized more, but I mean, it's come along. Been off for two months, so take what we can get at this point. You guys have another game tonight. How important two wins for the first half of January? Get these two uh, wins on your belt heading into the second half. It's massive. These points are double for us going to conference because the two games got canceled before. So yeah, it's a big crucial uh, two wins here, and we're just excited to get back out there. From an you know you're a, you guys are a what do you guys have to do to uh, put the puck in the back of the net a little bit more tonight cliche but we need to get pucks on net I think keep it simple not be too cute on the blue lines and yeah just get pucks on net and crash the net so that was our interview with Brad Boudreau big thanks once again to Andrew Marshall will be joining us a little bit later on during the broadcast but he talked about opportunities. They were there for Maryville. We mentioned effort a couple of times. You take advantage of those opportunities that you'll find because of effort. And also what I liked was simplifying things a little bit too. We just talked before about how this is only the first and second game back for Maryville for over a month. And really the third and fourth game that they've played in over two months at this point. So I think simplifying things and just, you know, knowing your role, playing within your role, doing your job, I think that's something Maryville should look to do in this game. Don't overcomplicate the game. Yeah, I like that, talking about simplifying things, because we saw it earlier in the game yesterday. They weren't necessarily clicking on the passes that they would have liked. Uh, and credit to the goaltender for Waldorf. He played a heck of a game. He ended up facing 33 shots, making several quality saves. But on the Maryville side of things, you could tell that they, even the passes that connected, normally they would have put it right in somebody's wheelhouse, and that would end up in the back of the net. Well, instead, it was just a little too far behind or a little too far out in front, and pe guys were having to reach for pucks because they were trying to complicate things. They were trying to kind of dipsy-do around guys and make passes that weren't necessarily the, the simplest. So if you just kind of play direct, get down your lanes, uh, do a weave if you need to coming into the offensive zone. But other than that, just get pucks towards net, look for rebounds, crash the net, play that Maryville style, dig in, win those puck battles, and I think that they should pull off another result. Uh, again, to Brad Boudreaux's point, this is a conference game, and it's a, it's a game that's winnable, and you, they only have a few more games before the conference tournament starts and then potentially the national tournament after that. So... Picking up points when and you can, when and where you can is always important. We're going to turn our attention now from the pregame show 
to the ice where they're going to be beginning the senior ceremony that's now getting underway for the Maryville University Saints Division I team.
Howie Stretch Grip Tape is a self-adhering cushiony gauze for better grip at the end of your knob. It's spongy for maximized comfort and cushion on your gloves, and it's soft yet abrasive to ensure the best grip. Howie's Pro Grip Tape is self-adhering with no adhesive to create an all-around grip on your stick knob. It uses a thinner material than our stretch grip tape to create a coarse abrasive tack on your gloves, and it's used around the globe by professionals. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements for improving team results, play development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an video and data solution for fans, players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics, ads, color commentary, on, uh, and play-by-play. At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reels 100% automatically. Analysts and the coaching staff get video breakdowns and stats from BitSwap. Pixelot's video analysis platform. Each game captured is automatically broken down by sports professionals on a video editing platform for in-depth analysis. The real-time game breakdowns from live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move and watch your upcoming opponent's matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe. Join the A. <laughs> Saints and the Waldorf Warriors last night. The Saints won two to one. Goals scored by Garrett Hunter and Lucas Adams. And the Saints look to complete the sweep today. A little afternoon hockey for us, gentlemen. Yeah, it should be a good one. Yeah, it should be a fun one. Uh, we saw in the first game the women lost, but I think you could tell the energy level, at least so far, seems to be a little higher for Maryville. That was an issue in last night's game. All the whole bench was standing, making a lot of noise at the beginning of this game. Certainly a good sign right before the puck is dropped. So 12 seconds into this one, an icing called as the Maryville Saints will skate from left to right in this first period, wearing their red alternate jerseys. The Waldorf Warriors donning their gray and purple we established last night. It is dark gray as Chuck, our man who is on the PA system today at senior night. He thought they were green. Might have to get his eyes checked. <laughs> he there, absolutely there is does. A, there is a greenish <laughs> twinge to it, I guess. But I saw it up close. <laughs> it's gray. I see it from here. It's gray. <laughs> Puck inside the Waldorf zone. They go D to D up to the near side red line. It's sent back the other way. Picking the puck up. Michael Heitkamp looks up. He'll throw it to his defense partner and Jack Deedy. Heitkamp gets it back. That stretch pass under the stick. Picked up by Ben McArthur. Sent in by TJ Prexler. Schiller out of his net. He had a decent game last night as he only let up two goals. There's a shot, that one. High of the cage. Timon Prexler sends it back down low as it goes around the boards. Jack Harrison picks it up. Will Smith back in the lineup today. Number 11 for the Maryville Saints as that puck is sent off the glass. The length of the ice, will it go all the way? It goes right off the pipe. Icing has been called, 18.43 left to go here in the first period. And Schiller, Todd, he had a fantastic game last night, stopping all of those shots that he saw except for two of them. A terrific game by the Warrior Netminder. He's gonna have to come up large today if the Warriors want to go home with a victory. Yeah, talked about him during the pregame that he was a big reason why the game stayed as close as it did for as long as it did. But 
Uh, they're going to need a similar performance to your point, Marshy, out of their goaltender here today. And, uh, especially if Maryville plays their style of hockey. They, they didn't play that great last night, and they still managed to get over 30 shots. So if they play their brand of hockey, we might see even close to 40. Ed Coffey in the cage for the Saints today. Johnny Macera was between the pipes last night, only let up one goal. I'm sure he would like to have that one back. Here's a wrister from the point, and that one redirected off the pad, off those iceberg pads of Schiller. That one sent out of the zone. Back forward is Jackson White for the Saints. He skates up ice, hits the blue line, enters into the Warriors zone, still with it on his forehand, tries to feed one out front. No one there to connect with the pass. Sent back down low in the corner near side. Smith bumped off the puck, Stavro helping him out. He lays a hit, picking the puck up. Tyler Repke, he'll float it into the neutral zone. Able to knock it down is Peyton Kesselhan. He'll wheel around the cage. Luke McLeod punches it forward. Jared Viggers on one hand, able to get it out of the zone. Viggers still battling for the puck. It is loose at the Maryville blue line. Jackson White able to come out with it, feeds it to his defense partner, and Garrett Hunter whiffs on that pass, turned over right in the slot, a shot. That one off a of body and over the net. Far side corner, Jackson White able to float it out behind the defenseman of Waldorf. Schiller, he'll leave it but we'll put a glove over it and we'll get a whistle with 17.06 left here in the first period. No score between the Saints and the Warriors. You and mentioned the job Schiller did last night. It's an even taller task today just because, as we mentioned earlier, Maryville not necessarily on their game last night. You compare that to today. Now he's got to play on back-to-back -back nights as well. I imagine Maryville's energy is going to be a little better. It's looked pretty good so far for the Saints, but now it's, Schiller's going to be playing on Less than 24 hours notice, really tough task. Here's an opportunity for the Warriors. They have three, and they bury it. 16.53 left to go here in the first period, and the Warriors strike first on this Saturday afternoon game. Yeah, great build-up play there for the Warriors. They win the face-off. They come down the wing with speed. Uh, they string together some good passes, and it sounds counterintuitive but I almost wonder if that might actually be good for Maryville to allow the first goal maybe that'll wake them up even more they've had a decent amount of energy here in the first uh, three minutes and change but maybe they kind of needed that slap in the face to really get them going so Trevor Henson will float it off the glass it's coming back the other way goes up into the netting and we'll have a face off inside the Waldorf zone with 1644 left here in the first period two shots for the Warriors one for the Saints one of those shots for Waldorf went into the back of the net. Pass Ed Coffey. That's where we sit. Offensive zone draw won by the Saints. Far side, MacArthur, his shot goes off a of body. It's coming out of the zone. Trevor Henson racing back for it. Head up on his forehand right in front of his own net. Stretch pass up the middle. No one there for the Saints, and it's taken over by Ryan Stokes. He'll use the net. He'll feed an outlet pass for Heitkamp. Heitkamp feeds one on over to Sweeney. Entering into the zone, Limbaum. Limbaum in. Good defensive play by Ben McArthur. Takes Limbaum down. No arm up. Brad Boudreaux with it on his backhand to the far side off Lucas Adams' skate. Tries to make a move behind the defender. Still with it. Feeds one out front. Goes off his skate. Rims around the boards near side. And Jackson White is there to keep it in. Behind the net. That pass out front right off a stick. Puck is loose in the slot. Comes out of the zone as Trevor Henson will pick it up at the red line. He'll play it back for Jackson White inside of his own zone. He goes D to D, top of the circle. Henson looks up, fires one right into the skates of Joey Gagan, and that one's going to go for an icing with 15.42 left here in the first. And Marcia, you had a chance to talk to Brad Boudreaux before the game, and he talked about keeping things simple, and I don't think we've really seen that thus far. We've seen some passes to where ideally they would have a teammate there, but whether it was a cross-ice pass earlier in the period or that stretch pass that we saw in the last shift they're playing it in places where guys should be but they're not so i mean they need to keep things simple find an open man make sure to hit somebody on the tape just don't throw the puck hoping that somebody will be there you can see the discombobulation between maryville players knowing where each other is supposed to be it looks like a team that's only playing their fourth game in the last two months second game to start off the 2022 campaign of course, four of those games were canceled. 
They're back on home ice this weekend as we celebrate senior night here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Gino shot on by Christian Alvagran. That one blockered into the corner, comes around to the near side. Jackson White stepping up. Cole Mudra there able to keep it in. Picked up by Gagan. Gagan to the forehand is shot. That one off a stick and wide. Comes around to the far side, picked up by Hunter. Hunter at the blue line, wrist one on, that one's high. Jackson White on his backhand, feeds it for Mudra. Mudra, top of the circle, shot on, and that one is stopped by Nelson Schiller with 14.57 left here in the first period. Warriors still up one to nothing, but a couple opportunities for the Saints, and they'll get an offensive zone draw here with three shots on net so far in the first. I like that stint there from Maryville. Like we talked before, they were getting a little too fancy with things, and that's something they tried to avoid. They're just throwing the puck on net. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. It doesn't need to be a perfect shot. Maybe you get a rebound that trickles your way. You, know, you shoot to create opportunities in some cases. Picked up by Smith. Smith at the dot, loses his handle of the puck. Squirts out to the blue line, comes out of the zone. Time and Prexler on his backhand, feeds it for Simpson. Simpson punches it forward. That one will trickle into the Waldorf zone. In on the four check, TJ Prexler, he's smushed up against the boards. Waldorf with it as they break out. Skating up the ice, Carson Cool hits the red line. He'll throw one in, hits off the skate of Nate Simpson as Smith picks it up on his backhand. Goes off the boards behind the net to Tymon Prexler. Looks up, feeds it to Harrison, to Prexler. Prexler back to Harrison. Harrison on his forehand, trying to drive wide. Feeds one out front, no one there. Hit off the skate. Tymon Prexler, his shot off a of body to the far side, down in the corner below the goal line, behind the net. Smith with it, using his body, protects the puck up top to Tymon Prexler, slap shot on, that one redirected in high of the cage. Luke Wright floats it into the neutral zone, gloved down by Prexler, and he'll play it back for Henson. Here comes TJ Prexler, enters into the zone, spins away, able to throw it down low, goes right past the stick of Lucas Adams, but Jake Charche is able to pick it up. Charche battling for the puck below the goal line, T.J. Prexler on his backhand. He's pinned up against the boards. Puck kicked away into the corner. Lucas Adams is there. Adams with it. Looks up, up top to Henson. Henson over to McArthur. That pass went right in between his skates and his stick, but he's able to get it down low. Adams comes out with it. Henson, wrist shot on. That one off the stick of Charche. Goes off the side of the cage. Charche with it again. Up top to the blue line. Wrist one on. That one blockered. Into the corner, far side, back down low. Big hit down on the far side of the ice. Adams with a move, shot on, that one stopped. Rebound, they score! Maryville's tied this one up. Good offensive zone pressure by the Saints. Ben McArthur creating offense as a defenseman. And we have a 1-1 game here with 12.52 left to go here in the first. Yeah, great answer from the Maryville Saints. They were able to cycle the puck around, keep good possession, not making passes just to make passes. They were trying to thread things together with a purpose. They finally got some pucks in on net, and they were able to cash in on a rebound. And it took away what would have been a penalty uh, and a power play as well. Someone on Waldorf, I believe for that boarding on the far side in the corner, was about to get called for a penalty. Ed Coffey had barely made his way back to the bench for Maryville to even have a one-man advantage for a few seconds before Maryville could net that goal. So the referees will convene with the Waldorf bench. Guys, I think I got a little too excited on that one. It's senior night. You can never get too excited when the Saints score. Well, especially when a defenseman gets in on oh. the scoring action too. I love that. And the defense activate, they create offense. And when these defense on this Saints team, when they when they jump up in the play, they're not just defensive defensemen. They are looking to put the puck in the back of the net. Garrett Hunter, defenseman, he scored the first goal last night for the Saints. And the Saints will get a power play. Yeah, they're still going to send Heitkamp to the penalty box. And that is a, a new rule in college hockey that if you do score on a delayed call, you do end up getting a power play on that. So the Saints will look to make it a 2-1 game. Far side, at the dot, shot on, rebound, they score! 
shot on, a great shot by Anthony Stavro. And right there to clean up the trash is Christian Alvagran. He makes it a 2-1 game. Saints are back on top. And again, it was similar to the first play, just getting pucks in on net. We saw it last night. Schiller was excellent in terms of stopping those initial pucks. But every once in a while, there was one that came back out in front. Last night, the, the Saints weren't necessarily in the right possession position. Tonight, they have been, and they've managed to knock in two. So the Saints will go D to D, that one off the stick as they break out of the zone. Saints in, Smith using his body, pokes it forward. Brad Boudreaux battling for the puck for the Saints, coming out with it. His mood flag, he skates up the near side boards. Tries to chip it by Jackson White, still maintains possession of the puck as it goes to the other end, the other side of the ice. And arm is up as Jackson White got tangled up with mood flag. We'll see what the call is with 12.01 left to go here in the first. Yeah, I think they're gonna get Jackson White with a penalty. He kind of got beat and just grabbed the jersey of Waldorf and just kind of dragged him down to the ice. They're gonna tag him for that. And it's a shame because all the momentum felt like it was behind Maryville up until that point. I mean, they got back-to-back -back goals to flip the score from a one-goal deficit to a one-goal lead. Things are looking like everything's going Maryville's way, but now Jackson White potentially put Maryville in a bad spot here. So a power play opportunity for Waldorf looking to even this one up. They'll set things up on the power play. Up top to the blue line, Height Camp walks the line. Back to Nelson, feeds one on over, shot on by Ribbink. Jake Charche able to get it out of the zone and Schiller will come out of his net. He'll stop it and Heitkamp will pick things up and look up ice for the Warriors. We saw next to nothing called yesterday in terms of penalties and there wasn't too much let go, but there were a few that were somewhat obvious. Not so here tonight. Big stop by Ed Coffey. That one squeaks out to the blue line, kept in by the Warriors. They'll send it around the boards to the far side at the half wall. Nelson tripped up. Two Saints and two Warriors battling for the puck. In the corner, puck squeaks out. Smith with it. He'll float it forward, and that one will come out of the zone. Maryville gets some fresh legs out on the ice. Cross ice pass at the red line. That one skits up in the air. Glove down, grabbed by a glove, and the Warriors will take over. There's they bring it back inside their own zone and look to start things once again. Heitkamp, he'll fire one on, and Ed Coffey thought about playing it. He'll elect to get a whistle with 45 seconds remaining in the Waldorf power play. 10.46 remaining here in the first period. Saints lead 2-1. And even beyond just the score, we've seen the offensive barrage from Maryville throughout this first period so far. They've got nine shots on net throughout this opening period. Just like we said earlier, when they were in the offensive zone on their own power play, throwing everything they can at the nets. Good things happen when you shoot on goal. Yeah, and that shot by Anthony Stavro is exactly how you draw it up. Shoot low, far side, get a rebound right off the pad, and that was pretty much easy for Christian Alvagran just to put it in the back of the net. Well, that's what we talked about. You, know, you shoot on net, it may not be a perfect shot, but you create a scoring opportunity potentially for someone sitting in front of the net. We'll see if... Waldorf can get a scoring opportunity of their own as they set things up on the power play inside the Maryville zone, far side, back up top to the blue line, wrist shot on, that one goes off a of body and out of play, three seconds remaining on the Jackson White minor, 10.04 left to go here in the first period, we'll see if Maryville can win a face off and maybe rim it around the boards to the far side and perhaps catch an odd man break. But that's something that we didn't see a whole lot last night, obviously statistically the Saints did have some shot blocks but you didn't have guys really selling out the way that Jack Harrison did there, and that's good to see because he's expected to do that kind of stuff for his team. A slap shot on right off the draw. Stop by Ed Coffey, and we are exactly halfway through this first period. Ten minutes remaining on the clock in this first frame. Still a 2-1 lead for the Saints as they win the defensive zone faceoff. Nate Simpson with it on his forehand. Up to Mudra, that one turned over off his skate to the backhand and that one. Unable to get towards the net. Skating back for the puck is Luke Wright. He's in a foot race with Alvagran. He spins away. Wright tangled up in the corner. Joey Gagan helping Alvagran out. Puck off the official as Wright will play it up the near side boards. Timon Prexler able to keep it in. Mudra using his body, maintains possession of the puck for the Saints. Up top to the blue line, Prexler. 
Far side, Simpson, shot on. That one stopped by Schiller. And we have a whistle with 9.22 left to go here in the first period. But good to see that line reestablish themselves very quickly once they got into the offensive end because you had a bit of a miscue uh, trying to escape their own zone with a kind of a cutesy pass from Mudra, backhand almost given away. But once they got control of the puck, they set it up, they kept things simple, ended up with a shot on goal. Face off one by the Saints, Stavro. Oh, that was a lucky break for the Saints. That could have been going the other way. And the net comes dislodged. We have a whistle. 12 seconds have gone by since the last one. No score change. Sean, this is your uh, first time on the D1 broadcast with us, I believe. Uh, Other than the... Earlier in the year, I believe I was able to make one. I'm trying to recall off the top of my head. I believe there might have been at least one other I've been on for. Well, it's good to have you on the headset. Our guy Chuck is the public address announcer for tonight's game. Jack of all trades, master of none. He is a professional game show <laughs> contestant. <laughs> So we'd like to think he knows how to talk. We know sometimes on the broadcast, he says some interesting things. Vigors in, forehand shot, that one blocked. Kept in by a skate of Luke McLeod. Turned over, Vigors able to get it down deep to McLeod. Vigors picks up the change, he scores! Jared Vigors, a second effort, makes it a 3-1 game for the Saints. Pushing and shoving below the goal line, but it doesn't matter. The Saints have a two-goal lead with 8.34 left to go here in the first. Just pa fantastic uh, patience there from Vigors because a lot of times you'll see guys that close to the goal, they panic a little bit and just shove it right into the goaltender. He let the goaltender kind of sell out, just drug it around him, buried it into an empty net. That's what I was going to point out. The hesitation from Biggers is what made it work. Yeah, he knew the goaltender was out and extended. He's going to have more speed moving forward than the goaltender will moving laterally. Waited just that split second for the window to open up. And at that point, it's an easy point blank goal. So more conversation happening after a goal. And it looks like we'll have another penalty. Two number 10s head into the box. That's Anthony Stavro and Austin Mood flag. So we will skate. Four on four. So some open ice for the Saints. As perhaps maybe they can make it a three goal lead here in the first period. So already more scoring than we saw last night. And we're not even 20 minutes into this game. Boudreaux, he'll get it in, going back for it as Heitkamp. Speedy Jackson White, the defenseman, picks it up for the Saints. Nice move by Boudreaux as he played it off the boards to himself. Picked up by White, up to Hunter. Hunter shoots one on off a stick. That one's going to be picked up by Waldorf. They'll throw it around the near side boards. There's Jackson White with it. White picks it up. White, he'll spin away, looks up, feeds it back for Boudreaux, who plays it back to White on the near side half wall. Over to Hunter, Hunter a shot. Oh, he rings the pipe, goes out of play. Almost made it a 4-1 game. And that is exactly where we saw him score last night, right in the high slot. And you talked about it with that goal from MacArthur, the defense for Maryville, they love to activate. They're not just sitting there with their heels on the blue line. They like to come up towards the circle and rip those kind of shots and a, an inch further downward and that might end up in the back of the net. So after the draw, Waldorf able to get it out. Timon Prexler back for it, feeds it to Simpson. TJ Prexler has Smith driving. Prexler shot on that one off a of body into the corner. Far side half wall. Waldorf able to come out with it. Skating up the ice for the Warriors. Tyler Nelson tries to make a move around Prexler. Smith comes in for a hit. Waldorf maintains possession of the puck. Shot on by Morrell and that one goes wide of the net to the far side, kept in by Waldorf. They still have it. Shot from a weird angle goes over the net. Morrell able to keep it in. Picked up by Nelson. Tries to drag it, but it comes out of the zone. And they'll fire it back in, but it goes into the netting. Good for three points. 7-12 left to go here in the first period. 38 ticks remaining until we have five on five hockey once again. 
feel like as this period has gone on, Maryville has really cleaned up their passing, especially in the offensive zone. They've looked like a way more cohesive unit than when this game began. You look at Waldorf, they've had a couple opportunities to maintain possession of the puck, but for instance, right there, you have the puck right inside the neutral zone and they decided to throw it back into the zone instead of maintaining possession, especially with four on four hockey. Kind of reminds you of roller hockey where puck possession is the name of the game. Here comes McLeod, McLeod in as he tries to put one past Schiller. He's taken down, a power play coming for the Saints. Backhanded pass, Henson with it. Drags it, picked up by McLeod, top of the circle, down low to Harrison. Harrison back up top, Ben McArthur unable to grab the puck, can't find the puck, and it is touched by Waldorf, whistle blown. Stavro and Mood Flag are out of the sin bin and we'll have five on four hockey for maybe two minutes unless the Saints can make it a 4-1 game. Well, that was a huge opportunity for Maryville because of the delayed penalty. Maryville was actually able to get Ed Coffey fully to the bench this time, but the sixth man on the, or fifth, I guess, in that case, came down right as the puck got lost and Maryville unable to track it down. Otherwise, they would have had a chance to break in five on four. At that point, the penalty was ending, so probably six on four or six on five, rather. And the Saints will go to the power play once again. Their last power play, well, it didn't really last that long. Prexler taking the face off for the Saints. He wins it. Back to his brother, Timon. Timon waits over. Stavro drags, shoots in that one wide. Picked up by Timon at the blue line. Looks it back over to Stavro. Stavro, top of the circle. To the bumper spot, a shot on and that one. Right into the wickets of Nelson Schiller with 6-12 remaining here in the first period. 14 seconds have gone by on the Maryville power play. We're already seeing Anthony Stavro and Christian Alvagran wristing one on. A couple good looks by those Saints. And that's definitely one that Alvergren would have loved to have gotten. He hasn't had the, the numbers this year that he would have liked, especially compared to the great offensive year he had last year. Brexler in his shot. That one stopped. And we'll do it all over again. Schiller's just been under fire throughout this first period so far. That's now the 14th shot on goal. Maryville ahead of their pace from last night where they had just 33 shots on goal. We still got another six minutes left to play in this period as well. So Maryville, plenty of time to add to that barrage on the net. Puck unable to stay in the zone. So now Waldorf will kill some clock. And he'll fire it down the length of the ice as Ed Coffey will make the stop with his blocker or the paddle of his stick. Here comes Timon Prexler skating up the ice. The old drop pass on the power play, a slap pass. That one, you see in a video game, it goes down the ice for an icing. 5.36 remaining here in the first period. 109 left to go in the power play. I don't really know about that pass down ice there. I'd rather see him get a little closer to mid-ice and try that. That way you don't have the icing, because now you got to come all the way back down to your defensive zone to set up shop. I like the idea, but it's about the execution. And, of course... Like you said, now you have a defensive zone faceoff while you're on a power play, but the Saints will slow things down as Timon Prexler will skate up ice. Far side, Lucas Adams enters into the zone, stops, tries to feed it to Timon Prexler. It's sent around the boards. Christian Alvagran able to pick it up and throw it back down low. TJ with it to the far side, up top to the blue line to his brother Timon. Timon. To Stavro, Stavro using his body to protect the puck as he's tied up against the boards. Timon tries to float it off the glass. It's picked up by Stavro, down low to TJ. To Stavro, Stavro in and a shot. That one stopped by Schiller. Picked up by Alvagren. Up top to the blue line for Timon. Over to do Adams. Drags, shot that one off a of body as Stavro was looking to fire one on and get it towards the net. He did, but it was off a of body. And Morell able to play it up to the blue line, kept in by Timon Prexler. Here's Adams down low for TJ Prexler. Prexler behind the net on his forehand, looking for Anthony Stavro. Goes off a stick. 
Hyman Prexler able to keep it in. Stavro, his pass. And now Ed Coffey thought about coming out. Nelson in. Nelson makes a move. Oh, what a stop by Ed Coffey. Oh, my goodness. What a save by the big number 35 netminder for the Saints. He Adam. got beat initially. He was going to his right. The puck was going to his left. But he was able to kind of turn his body laterally to get down on the ice with that glove. That's why he was able to make that beautiful save there and keep this at a two-goal advantage for Maryville. Yeah, I don't know how he keeps that out. The finish from Waldorf left a little bit to be desired. But, I mean, that's still a spectacular save to have the wherewithal to get your arm out there, just do everything you can to make the save. Depending on how this one ends, that could be a game-changing save early on in this game in the first period. 4.17 left to go here in this first frame. What a stop by Ed Coffey. We've seen some 10-bell saves from Johnny Macera, but Ed Coffey, he can do it as well. Makes a huge save to keep it a two-goal game for the Saints. Puck below the goal line, Brad Boudreaux. He lost the handle of the puck as he's pinned up against the boards. Cross corner dump in. Going back for it, Jackson White. Onto his forehand, makes a move, spins around. Harrison will play it to the other, uh, to the other side. That pass, center ice. Here comes Brad Boudreaux. He'll float it in on his back end. Big hit by Jack Harrison. Simpson to Boudreaux. Boudreaux, sauce pass up top of the blue line. Simpson, wrist one on, that one's off a of body. Harrison looks for it, comes back up top to Simpson. Over to Henson. Henson looks up, shoots one on, that one off a stick. Redirected wide, it would have went wide either way. Hits off of the glass, comes up to Henson. Back down low for Smith. Smith looks up, ooh, looking to the other side of the ice. As Jack Harrison had his stick down, all he had to do was Flick the wrist, and that would have went in the back of the net, but a stick was in the lane, and the puck goes out of play. <laughs> Offensive zone draw coming. Smith wins it. Vigors back up to Henson. Henson makes a move. That shot off a stick goes over the net. Picked up by Heitkamp. Heitkamp will play it forward. Waldorf. Breaks out of their zone, here they come. Ryan Stokes battling for it. He spins and tries to fire one down low. It hits off the body of Will Smith. Both teams jabbing at the puck. Smith able to get it out as Charche has it. Charche waits, waits, drags, shoots, stopped by Schiller. That would have been a beauty of a goal if he would have dragged that and went top shelf. Stokes spins away, Charche in the corner, looks up. Thought he had Smith in the high slot. Glove down, kept in by Charche. Charche, Vigors at the dot. Unable to get the pass or shot off. Still with it, Maryville has it. Henson back down low for Smith. In front, that one punched away as Ben MacArthur steps up and keeps it in. Charche below the goal line. Throws it around to the other end. I keep saying other end, the other side of the ice. That one shot redirected, picked up. It was just sitting there. And Henson will pick it up. Below the goal line, Henson gets it back. Coming in from a line change, Cole Mudra. Mudra gets it, fires one wide. Gagging with it. To the blue line, MacArthur. He had the first goal of the game for the Saints. Mudra with it, on his backhand. Alvagran shot, on his score! Christian Alvagran, he might have glanced off a skate. I think Gagan got a piece of that. He did, as he will lead the charge as the hands are up. They touch gloves and the Saints celebrate as they now lead four to one with 1.28 left to go here in the first. Yeah, great eyes there, Sean, to see that Gagan got a touch in on that, but again, Great cycle work for Maryville. They were able to fork to puck around. Alvergren finds an open shot, takes it. There was traffic in front. Gagan was able to get a piece, and it slips through the five hole. Schiller out of his net on his forehand, rims it around the boards. Waldorf able to exit their zone. It's poked forward by Ben McArthur. He'll punch it. 
Oh, what a hit by Cole Mudra. Chopping at the puck is Alvagran. Mudra fires one on from a weird angle and it's stopped by Schiller with exactly 60 seconds remaining here in the first period. 17 shots for the Saints, four goals on the scoreboard. And the offense has come alive here in the first 20 minutes at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Two things I want to make a point before we head into intermission. We don't talk to Coach Hogan during the game, but if we could during intermission, I'm sure he'd be in a much better mood than he was before this game began and last night. It's been a great first period for Maryville. Second point I want to make, Schiller. It's not been his game so far. He just played last night. I wouldn't be surprised if second period we see Brendan Woodward come off the bench. He's stressed right now on the bench as the backup goaltender for Waldorf. I think it might be time to give him some play out there just because, like I said, four goals in one period. Schiller's playing on back-to-back -back nights. I think it's appropriate for him to be taken off. Nothing he's done wrong in this game, but just not your night. Well, it's one of those situations for a goaltender that it's extremely frustrating because there's really nothing he could have done about any of the goals. Yeah. So in your mind, you're like, well, what am I doing differently than I did last night? And I only allowed two, and I was playing great, whereas four have gotten by me in one period here tonight. And I think you have to credit the Saints for the way that they have came out and displayed their offense tonight. Been a totally different game offensively for Maryville. Skating up the ice with it, Luke Wright. Wright well, loses the puck. It's at the red line. It's poked forward by Nelson. Nelson with it to his backhand. Fires one on on his backhand, stopped by Coffey. Far side. Vigors and the Saints get it out. Stavro in. Looking for Josh Tack. Prexler whiffs on it. Tack shoots one on, bounces over a couple of sticks, and that'll do it for the first period. So the Saints, they put four on the board as they head into the dressing room. A different looking game than last night. And like you said, Sean, Coach Hogan, I'm sure, is a lot happier than he was than last night. The Saints will head into intermission up three. Guys, what did you think of that first period? A much better period of play for the Maryville Saints. And what's impressive is like they still managed to get to four goals and they were still making a couple of the mistakes that they made last night but they managed to make those mistakes cost them a lot less than we saw last night. They, they got up with their physical play a little bit more than we saw last night. So just as an overall effort, they have to be much happier with the outcome. Yeah, I mean, you look at how the period began. Maryville allowed one goal early on the second shot of the game from Waldorf, and you kind of think at that point, uh-oh, is this going to be another bad game? Could this be an uglier game than last night? But something clicked after that for Maryville. I think it was when that first penalty occurred where Maryville got two goals. After that, the barrage never ended on net. I mean, they put up 17 shots on goal in one period. They're about halfway to where they were last night. So last night they had 33 goals over the course of three periods, or 33 shots, not 33 goals. <laughs> that would be something else, but... Yeah. 33 shots on net last night, 17 through the first period tonight. Much better start for Maryville, especially on the offensive end. Well, we'll break things down, everything that happened in that first period in our intermission report. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Maryville Saints Hockey right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. How is stretch grip tape? is a self-adhering cushiony gauze for better grip at the end of your knob. It's spongy for maximized comfort and cushion on your gloves, and it's soft yet abrasive to ensure the best grip. Howie's Pro Grip Tape is self-adhering with no adhesive to create an all-around grip on your stick knob. It uses a thinner material than our stretch grip tape to create a coarse abrasive tack on your gloves, and it's used around the globe by professionals. In today's sports world, high quality video and accurate data are key elements for improving team results, player development, and fan engagement. Pixelot, the world's leading AI automated sports production company, provides an end-to-end -end video and data solution for fans, 
players, and coaches. Pixelot systems are installed around the world and produce thousands of live matches every day with customized live graphics, ads, color commentary, and play-by-play. -play. At the end of the game, our AI generates highlight reel 100% automatically. Analysts and the coaching staff get video breakdowns and stats from VidSwap, Pixelot video analysis platform. Each game captured is automatically broken down by sports professionals on a video editing platform for in-depth analysis. The real-time game breakdowns from live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move, and watch your upcoming opponent's matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe. Join the AI revolution in sports. college hockey it's more than just what school you play for more than just another sweater you pull on it's about focus determination strategy and pours. It's more than just packed rinks and screaming fans. It's about heart, skill, and passion. In nearly 30 years of the ACHA, we don't just play the game of hockey. We are the game of hockey. Hundreds of elite players and coaches from some of the United States and Canada's most prestigious programs. The American Collegiate Hockey Association. More than just a game. Welcome back to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. One period through and a great first period for Maryville as they find themselves out in front 4-1. to one. I'm Sean Malone alongside Todd Panula. And Todd, we talked about it during pregame. Maryville needed to bring a higher level of energy for tonight's game compared to last night. I think it's fair to say they did just that. Yeah, over the course of 20 minutes, they definitely did that. Uh, a little bit worrisome the way they came out of the gate. Uh, to your point there before the intermission, uh, it was a little bit discouraging the fact that they allowed the first goal I kind of made the point maybe that would be a little bit good for them get slapped in the face kind of respond to it and they did just that because they allowed that goal at 307 and then score the equalizer about four minutes later so it was a good answer and then once they got the offense rolling there was really no slowing them down no I mean the offensive scoring came in bunches their first goal didn't come until there was 13 minutes left in the period so over the course of 13 minutes they put four pucks in the back of the net just a non-stop barrage against Schiller the goaltender for Waldorf who I suggested not anything against him personally, but it might be appropriate to pull a goaltender in a game like this. He's playing on back-to-back -back nights, and so far he's just faced a flurry of shots. I would think from you know an outside-looking-in perspective, why not give Woodward a shot in net at this point? Not to see if that allows you to come back and win, but just to rest Schiller, who's clearly your number one goaltender. Yeah, because anything to do with goaltenders, it has to do with the mental thing. 
Uh, it doesn't matter how strong you are. Sometimes it's just not your night. And to the to kind of bounce off the point that you made, I kind of made the similar idea that sometimes it is just good to give him a break mentally because he's not playing a bad game. The pucks are still getting in behind you. Eventually the frustration starts to creep in, and then you get in situations where if the goaltender is playing with a frustrated mentality, it is easier to make them make mistakes, whereas so far he hasn't. Let's take a look at some stats. We mentioned the shot barrage that Waldorf University and their goaltender Schiller has faced so far throughout this game. 17 shots from Maryville compared to 7 for Waldorf. 21 scoring chances for the Saints compared to 9 for Waldorf. And this is pretty surprising at this point, especially when you look at those shot totals. 13 blocked shots by Waldorf, only 6 for Maryville. That's another typical John Hogan calling card besides playing fast and aggressive. Uh, blocking a lot of shots is a big part of it as well. Maryville one for two on the power play. They actually got two goals out of that one penalty. Uh, meanwhile, Waldorf 0 for 1 on their one power play throughout this game. So Maryville, we talked about the offensive chances they have. There's been plenty of them throughout this game. Even when it doesn't result in a shot on goal, they've had a lot more opportunities than Waldorf has. Yeah, as you saw there in the statistics, they're, they're getting all the shots that they want in through on target. May either forcing a save or generating a scoring chance. When there's only a four shot difference between your scoring chances and your actual shots on goal, you know that you're making the most out of the chances that you're getting. It's not as though you're just sending pucks blindly in towards the net and you're missing up high, you're missing wide, uh, hitting off the post, whatnot. These are all shots that are basically on target and you're either scoring or you're forcing a save and that's good for your offense. Yeah, let's take a look at some of those scores that we have from Maryville. Again, the score is 4-1. to one. Maryville Saints out in front of Waldorf University. The first goal came actually from defenseman, sophomore defenseman Ben MacArthur coming in from the point. So you see him attacking on the left side there. First shot doesn't go. He gets the rebound and gets it home. That's that aggressive hockey that we talk about from John Hogan where he, all the way opposite side of the play the defenseman's moving up to the slot because he sees the opening there right he saw Lane he was able to have the freedom due to his coach's confidence in their ability to play within the system and get back if that doesn't work out it worked out in this in this instance because he had the confidence to go forward utilize that open space sneak in behind everybody because even the the most structured defense isn't really going to account for that backside defender because you're used to them staying down at the blue line. Now the second goal came from a forward. Christian Alvagran was able to find the back of the net from an assist from Anthony Star Stavro. You see right there, it starts at the point to the far side, shot on net, rebound, back of the net. We kind of talked about that in game too, Todd, how sometimes you just shoot not necessarily to get a goal, but to create a scoring opportunity. Back-to-back -back goals that we just saw there were off the rebound. Yeah, and that was what uh, Boudreau, Brad Boudreau was talking about, simplifying things going into this game, and that's part of that. You just funnel pucks into the net and get guys to get down low, crash the net. That wasn't necessarily a, a, a gritty, dirty kind of goal, but it was a good-placed goal well-timed by Alvagran to manage to find that loose puck and just slip it home. Now, it wouldn't be Alvagran the only senior getting in on the scorings. It would be Jared Viggers who would follow it up for the third goal to make it a 3-1 to one game. Maryville, loose puck in front of the net, and that hesitation we talked about from Viggers beautifully shown off there in slow motion. He didn't have the opening right away, but he knew... I wait a little bit. I'm moving forward. The goaltender with all that extra gear is trying to move laterally. He knew he had the speed to get around the goaltender, and he certainly did for the third goal of the game. Yeah, it was a great finish by Vigors. Great patience to hold on to that puck just until the right opportune moment. And we saw a little bit from the goaltender as well in Schiller where he kind of, uh, somebody's stick was kind of caught up in with him. He flung it over, so that frustration is starting to show with that goal and then Maryville was able to get another one even after that. Before we get to that goal, it's not been all offense for Maryville. Ed Coffey's played some good hockey too. None better than the goal he made late in the first period. Best offensive opportunity. You see, he actually gets beat to the right, but is able to quickly stop himself and get the glove down to make the save. 
Who says that bigger goaltenders tend to move slower? Ed Coffey would disagree with that. Yeah, a lot of times we give uh, maybe too much credit to Johnny Massara just due to his athletic ability. But to your point, sometimes it's easier to see it with the smaller guys. Ed Coffey still has a lot of athleticism, but he makes it look easier maybe than somebody like Johnny Massara just because he covers so much in the net. But he was able to recover there. He had gotten beat rather cleanly, but he's still able to use that reach to his advantage cover that goal line they weren't able to roof the puck and it ended up being an excellent save and keeping the the score line uh, with a, a two goal lead at the time and then allowing Maryville to get an extra one yeah and that extra one came off the stick of Joey Gagan third senior to score on senior night in the first period you see Maryville gets the puck behind the net now they work it to the slot again shot on net that is deflected in by Joey Gagan who is sitting there just blocking in front of the nets you know being in an opportune place we talked about rebounds before that's where they're going to fall is right in front of the net usually Joey Gagan this time no need for a rebound he deflects it in for a goal makes it four to one Saints yeah you want to be in front of the net because good things are going to happen when you're in that kind of position even if he misses that deflection and the goaltender makes the save the shot was low enough, I think, to where it's going to come back off the pad and Gagan would be in perfect position for a rebound. But as you said, he didn't even need to go for the rebound because he was uh, he showcased his skill in terms of hand-eye coordination, was able to get a tip past the goaltender. That close to the goal, there's really nothing that Schiller could do once it ramps off that stick and it ends up with the fourth goal of the game. And uh, you couldn't ask for much more from a Maryville perspective, not just offensively, but from the feel-good standpoint of it with all the goals other than the MacArthur goal coming from seniors and Alvergan with two points on the night getting that second assist. Yeah, certainly a great first period for Maryville. They find themselves out in front 4-1. to one. We're going to take a break. When we return, second period action underway on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Todd Panula, and we have Sean Malone with us as well. 20 minutes have gone by here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. The Saints lead 4-1 to one here on a Saturday afternoon as they take on the Waldorf Warriors. A conference opponent, the second period is underway, and the Waldorf Warriors have won the draw. Michael Heitkamp with it. He'll slow things down behind his own net. He'll set up shop, waiting for his wingers to swing wide. Taking his time. Still five on five. You'd think they would be on the power play, but that is not the case. Puck sent around the boards near side. To the far side. Maryville with it. Up to the blue line. Knocked down by Henson. He'll shoot one on that one off a of body. Picked up by TJ Prexler. He's held. Up top to the blue line, MacArthur with it. Wrist one on into the glove of Schiller. And 50 seconds have gone by, and Heitkamp pushes Will Smith into the net. And what is he, he just, doing? I think he was trying to do just that, swinging around all the way until he made contact with someone. I have never seen that before. That <laughs> I've was never actually either. hilarious. I, I guarantee you that was one of He won't say it was intentional, but I think he knew what he was doing there. I right. thought he was caught up in the net, and he was just trying to get out. But once I saw him I, doing crossovers, I yeah. knew something was up. <laughs> when you could see the frustration both with the defenseman and Schiller in net, once he came all the way around, 
they just kind of tried to shove the net away from him. It's, <laughs> I think he basically accomplished exactly what he wanted to, which was getting under their skin a little bit. A, Give him a little something, something yeah, at the it's end. It's a devious play. Let's uh, see. There, officials are talking with captains from both sides right now, and the door is open for the sin bin. They're going to put Heitkamp into the penalty box because of that. Will Smith is going to go as well. I'd like to know what the description of the penalty is for Will Smith that put him in the box because like we said we've never even seen that before <laughs> I have no Un idea I don't know what that could be sportsmanlike I would have to imagine yeah. that's kind of a catch-all no and then and then height sure. probably uh, going in there for shoving Smith into the net which was pretty much unnecessary but well either way it was very it was very entertaining for us to, to say the least so so we play four on four. Waldorf with it, near side. As our guy Chuck Krause gives us the answers to our question. So yeah, they got a hate camp for roughing and then unsportsmanlike on Will Smith. Puck rimmed around the glass, comes into the neutral zone, played back into the Waldorf zone. Stretch pass off the skate of Timon Prexler. And Ed Coffey will play it for Nate Simpson. To the far side, one touch pass. Here comes Brad Boudreau, leaves it for Adams. Adams, he'll spin away, looks up at the blue line, feeds it down low for Timon. Timon Prexler with it, bumped off the puck, but he gives it to Adams. Adams stops and starts as the referee almost lost his footing. Brad Boudreau back up to Timon Prexler. He'll throw it off the glass down low. Battling for position is Adams. Taken down was Morrell with it. Boudreau, fans on the shot. Hits off the skate, gets it back. Up top to the blue line, Prexler makes a move. Spins away on his forehand to the other side. Garrett Hunter off the boards, down low for Boudreau. Boudreau to his backhand, loses his handle of the puck, and Waldorf will come out with it. Nelson makes a move, goes around Adams, hits the red line, tries to dangle his way through. He does. Nice pass in, backhand. Oh, another stop, and the whistle has been blown as Nelson put it in the back of the net. But the whistle blew before Waldorf could score. Yeah, I'd love to be able to hear the explanation of the official there. I, I understand that they uh, have the intent to blow the whistle, and therefore it doesn't matter when the whistle actually comes, but that really should be a goal for Waldorf because that puck was loose. Well, the rule is when the official loses sight of the puck, you blow the whistle. They lost sight of the puck, but just too little too late. I think it was Lindblom that poked it out from underneath Ed Coffey and into the back of the net. So Schiller throws it to the middle of the ice. Hunter, his shot off of a shin pad. Far side, coming to the near side at the blue line. Stokes makes a move into the skates of Hunter. Hunter able to body him inside the neutral zone. Plays it forward for the Saints. Smith has McLeod. Smith to McLeod off his backhand and off the skate. Maryville able to pick it back up, though. McLeod loses the puck. Waldorf off the wall into the neutral zone at the red line. Off the wall again. Going back for it. Jackson White. He'll reverse it. Comes along the wall, out of the zone, and Heitkamp will play it back to his defense partner and Josh, or Jack Deedy. Heitkamp with it again, at the dot, off the wall. Playing billiards here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. In front, shot on, right between the wickets. Five hole, and Waldorf has cut the lead in half. It's a 4-2 game here with 16-21 left to go in the second period. That's Lindblom again. The second goal of the game now for Waldorf. And keep in mind, he was the one that almost got that goal before. Really, you can argue a goal taken away from him as the whistle came in too little too soon for him. Does convert on this one. Now Maryville's advantage just down to two goals. Ben MacArthur racing for the puck. He grabs it. That one skips over the stick of Josh Tack. Off the skate, TJ Prexler to his forehand. He's slashed and whacked at. Still battling for the puck. Gets it down low for Smith. Smith 
still with it as he's twirling around, able to grab the puck once again. It's loose, jabbing at it, and now it's scored loose, but after the whistle, and now some pushing and shoving, some punches thrown. 15.55 left to go here in the second period. 4-2 game. That's interesting to see with a confidence matchup. And obviously you don't want players overstepping their bounds and taking penalties, but that's two plays in a row now, one for either team to where they've taken a few extra whacks at the goaltender and the puck has been knocked loose and there really hasn't been an answer from either team. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on here, but a lot of times you see somebody end up sitting on the ice if they do that. Shot on that one off a of skate. Waldorf picks it up, they'll float it in. To the glove, Coffey, able to throw it around the boards, near side half wall to the front of the net. Puck still loose, blocker save, and another whistle blown as Tack starts throwing some punches. Oh, and taken down, Lucas Adams takes a cross check to the face. Someone's going to head to the penalty box. It could be multiple people. Pretty oh. sure the initial penalty was gonna be on Adams, but yeah, to your point, he took cross check to the face so I think that's going to even out I think it's going to be even here but the officials have to do a better job of you know breaking things up and get a body on body to pull someone away before that happens the official was right there in front of it and just kind of watching as things were happening you, know, you got to separate these players from each other or else it will continue to escalate till we get to a point like this where now it's two men in the box and now hang on Okay, I thought for a second they were about to send a second player for Waldorf into the penalty box. I thought Kesselhorn was about to join his teammate in the sin bin. Now that's Austin Mood flag heading back to the sin bin for the second time today. I think that's the right call there from the official. To Sean's point, they probably should have clamped down on it a little bit quicker, but uh, the initial penalty was against Adams. He was just kind of the third or fourth player in, so he instigated that. He drew the penalty when there was a retaliation, so just having them kind of wipe each other out is probably the right play. Nelson, forehand, back door, they score! 4-3. Here come the Warriors of Waldorf. Nice play. Puck into the back of the net, and with 15-13, left here in the second. It's now a one-goal game. And oh, just like that, that shows you how quickly even Waldorf can strike, especially if you leave the backside open and when you've got a situation where you've only got four players on the ice, you're not necessarily expecting to have to have somebody guard that backside. And similarly to how Maryville scored earlier in the game, the defenseman came in and was able to slip it back. Trevor Henson with the puck. On his forehand, skates up by far side, finds McArthur. He has a speedy Christian Alvagran who's after the puck. Below the goal line, behind the net, puck squirts loose and skating out with it is Luke Wright. Now Heitkamp with it. Heitkamp, he'll go D to D. Wright over to Nelson. Nelson makes a move, still has it, Nelson. Ribbing, picks it up for the Warriors, feeds it down low. Lindblom, Lindblom able to get back to the puck as it was knocked away by Trevor Henson. Off the wall, that one has to be offsides, it is, and with 14.25, we have a whistle. I think Stokes just kind of lost place of himself on the ice, because he was acting like he was towing the line about to go in. The problem was, he was already two feet past the line. It's interesting to see in this period, we've had a couple different four-on-four -four sessions. And Maryville, on the initial time, they look like the team on the power play. Now it's the script has been flipped, whereas uh, even though the manpower is still even, it's been uh, Waldorf that looks like they're on a power play. Jackson White with it. He'll set up shot behind his own net. He'll skate up ice. Looks up, far side pass. Prexler tries to drag it right outside the blue line. Jackson White with it once again. He'll stop behind the net. Stokes. He'll trail him. Drop pass to Smith. Smith thought about giving it to Hunter. Skates up ice. Loses it. Turns it over. Here comes Stokes. In all alone. Stokes. Forehand. Shoots one on. 
and that one is stopped by Ed Coffey. He might have fanned on the shot, and he had a golden opportunity to tie this one up. Saints going the other way, Jackson White with it. White, forehand, drops it, Prexler shot. Oh, and that one stopped by Schiller. Going the other way are the Warriors at the red line. They feed it up. Here they come, Nelson in, backhand, forehand, they score! Just like that, down three. The Warriors tie it up here in the second period. What a second period for Waldorf. 4-4 with 13.25 left to go here in the second. Waldorf came out in this period with their hair on fire. I think they were upset with how that first period went, the physicality Maryville brought to them. They have been a totally different team here in period number two. We talked about how Coach Hogan was probably happy at the end of the first period. He's taking a timeout right now. I don't think he's going to be very happy at this moment, allowing three unanswered to Waldorf. Yeah, they need to come out, out of this timeout, string together a few good shifts because they haven't had the same kind of energy. They haven't had the same kind of production in terms of stringing together quality plays that we saw in that first period. So all you can do now is you're back to square one. Get a few good shifts under your belt. Start to play that Maryville style again because we've seen when they're scrambling in their defensive zone, they have not managed to, to get back into position and they've allowed themselves too many opportunities where they had to try to get back into position where the, that guy has cut down through the middle or on the backside wing and it's just too difficult to get over into position defensively and it's been pretty easy goals to cash in on. So a timeout taken by the Saints. Just an opportunity for them to reset. It's been all Waldorf in this second period. Let's see if the Saints can keep things five on five for the most part here and stay out of trouble. Josh Tack at the red line. He'll fire it in deep. Schiller out of his cage. He'll leave it. Picked up by Didi. Far side at the half wall. Coming out of the zone. That floats all the way down the ice. Going to be an icing. It will. 13-10, left to go here in the second. And that seems like a small thing, but that's a good shift there because you force them into a mistake. There's really no need for them to have iced that puck, but they got a little bit antsy. You're trying to clear it over the defense. So now if Maryville can win this faceoff, then you get another good shift under your belt. Faceoff one, Mudra shoots one on. That one sticked into the netting. Quick shot, a good face-off win, and Mudra, if you could not tell, he set up on the hash marks and last second switched to that spot where he shot the puck, top of the circle. Let's we'll see if they can do it again. Waldorf wins the face-off this time. Far side, up the wall, comes out of the zone. Tack is there at the red line. He'll fire it back down in deep. Schiller out of his net, on his forehand, throws one off the boards. Mudra there to keep it in. Gagan smacking at the puck. Taking a tumble into the boards with Zachary Bender. Shot on, that one off a of body. Backhanded shot, rebound. Gagan unable to grab it. Picked up by Bender. Cross ice pass. Going back into the zone. That one sent all the way down the ice. No icing. Timon Prexler with it. Looks up, fires one. Near side, picked up at the red line by Jared Viggers. Viggers drops it, it's intercepted. Stavro there to pick it up. Stavro shot, that one blocked. Still with it, below the goal line. Nelson, Stavro tries to drag it and then go backhand behind his back. Floated into the neutral zone for a brief second. It was inside the Saint zone. It came out, goes right back in. Prexler with it. Timon sets things up behind the net. Looks up, fires one. Intercepted, kept in the zone by Waldorf. Pruxler with it again. Here's Josh Tack at the dot, top of the circle, near side. Plays it forward. Waldorf will play it back. Goes right off the shin pad of Tack, two on one. Waldorf in, shot, blocker save. Goes around the boards. Knocked down by Lucas Adams on his backhand. McLeod feeds it for Stavro. Stavro all by himself. He'll slap one on that one. Stopped by Schiller. 
Repke with it. He'll take his time. Swinging wide is Mood Flag. No one pressuring as Lucas Adams is shadowing right in front of Schiller as time is just ticking down. Waldorf will send it in deep. Going back forward is MacArthur, who is back and takes a huge hit. Maryville's going to have a power play. MacArthur, slow to get up. Taking his time is Trevor Henson. So the Saints will have a power play. Let's see if they can score. That one knocked away. 10.31 left to go here in the second period. We'll see if this could, th this could be a five minute power play the way that MacArthur was hitting to the boards. We'll see. It was a very violent boarding that's gonna go against Ropke. We'll see how much time they put up on the scoreboard. Yeah, there wasn't much hesitation there. They broke up the meeting of the officials pretty quick. Five minutes. And I kind of think that's probably the right call. It's not even necessarily the hit in and of itself, but to Sean's point, it was the force of it. If, if Repke goes into that hit and pulls up a little bit, same kind of hit, but maybe a little bit less, I think that's a two-minute penalty. But he just went full bore into that. He had every intention of putting... MacArthur through the wall if possible. So it ends up costing them five minutes. Well, we talked about before how back in that first period, Maryville allowed the goal and that woke them up a bit. Wonder if a five minute major power play could certainly wake up the Saints in the second period. They've been playing bad, but it is not the same Saints we saw in the first period. So an opportunity to put up multiple goals to be a game changing power play right here for the Saints. A cloud taken down. That looked like it might have hurt. That might have been a boarding as well. Certainly nowhere near to the extent as the last one, but you could make the argument for it. Henson finds Jackson White. White floats it in, glove down, and sent back the length of the ice. Going the other way. Henson racing back for it. Coffey will throw it up the boards near side at the half wall. Brad Boudreau will enter into the Warriors zone. Boudreau to his backhand, off the referee. McLeod with it as the Saints try and set things up. Henson, he'll slow things down for Boudreau. Back to Henson at the dot. Henson, that shot, and that one's off a body and into the netting for a whistle with 9.25 left to go here in the second period. Obviously, you've got to play within the system that Coach Hogan has set up, so we don't know the ins and outs of what they run on the power play, but the compactness of the offense for Maryville is allowing the defense for Waldorf to really kind of stay within their box. I think they need to stretch it out, get it back to the blue line a little bit more. Able to backhand it out is Jacob Lindblom. Timon Prexler behind his own net as he'll skate up ice. Prexler with it. Drops it for Stavro at the blue line. Stavro back to Prexler. Prexler, far side. Cross ice pass for Adams. Adams, top of the circle, drops it for Stavro. Stavro at the blue line. Timon Prexler back to Stavro. Stavro, ooh, looking to feed Lucas Adams on the other side of the ice. Prexler with it. Drops it for Adams. Adams back to Stavro. Stavro, top of the circle, near side. Back down low. Feeds it to the front. Glove down by Adams. Shot on. Redirected and into the glove. But see, that oh. was kind of what I was talking about. You utilize the pass back to the blue line. You make quick passes, but that gets the defense moving once you draw at least one of those forwards out. And then they have to try to recover, and that gets you a shooting lane. 3.05 left to go here in the Maryville power play. 8.36 remaining on the clock for the second period. Puck is just loose and a couple of skates kicked away down low, sent around the boards, and that will come out of the zone as Coffey out of his cage to his backhand. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. 
Got to be a little more communication there to, to know that that defender was over on that side. Well, that and that pass off the boards trickled out in front of the net, and Ed Coffey had his back to it. He had no idea that puck popped out there. Really lucky break for Maryville. Waldorf was nowhere to be found. Stavro, top of the circle, over to Prexler. Adams, wrist one, that one off a skate, gets it back. Adams again, down low, off a stick. TJ Prexler tries to spin away. He's pinned up against the boards. Adams with it again at the dot, down low. Oh, backhand in the back of the net. Will Smith back in the lineup, and he makes it a 5-4 game for the Saints with 7.37 left to go here in the second period. It's similar to that play that we saw from Biggers in the first period. We see it from Smith again. He's got it on the doorstep. He manages to hang on just a little bit, create that space, and then just roof it, taking his time to do so. And that's exactly what Maryville needed. They had to get at least one goal on this power play. The momentum swing in favor of Waldorf, if they managed to have killed off the entire five minutes, would have been uh, just a lot. What a beautiful play by Will Smith. Great execution by Maryville on the power play. They looked a little jumbled early on, but they were able to tack on a goal, and they have more power play time, maybe trying to extend this lead. Taken down is Luke McLeod. Going back for the puck is Bender. He'll rim it around the boards. Off the skate of Jack Harrison. At the goal line, around the net to the near side. Up top to the blue line for Brad Boudreaux over to Henson. Henson back to Boudreaux. Top of the circle. Fires one on. That one's blocked by a sliding Morgan Sweeney. Picked up by McLeod to the other side. Below the goal line. To the front. Intercepted by Jacob Lindblom. And he'll fire it down the ice. 6.50 left here in the second period. 1.15 remaining on the Maryville power play. Henson makes a move at the red line. Enters in. The big defenseman for the Saints. Gets the puck knocked away from him. Still with it. Punches at it. Up top, Lucas Adams back on the ice to Henson. Henson, top of the circle, tries to force that pass. It's kept in by Adams, who jumps at the blue line, but the puck finally squeaks out of the zone. Bender is nailed by Jack Harrison. In Nelson's shot. That one stopped by Coffey with 6.14 left to go here. In the second period, that's the 16th shot of the day for the Warriors. 43 seconds remaining on the Maryville power play. Face off one by the Saints. Spinning away was Tymon Prexler as he picks up the puck. Skates in front of his own net. Makes a move, feeds it for Anthony Stavro, who hits Will Smith. Smith, so far, one goal, and it was a beauty. Just happens to be the one that made it a 5-4 game for Maryville. Smith to Prexler. Prexler on his forehand, gets it. Stavro shot on. That one stopped by Schiller. Whistle blown with 12 seconds left on the power play. Gentlemen, both goalies wearing the iceberg pads. Of course, Ed Coffey's are white with red, and Nelson Schiller has purple with white. I am a fan of the iceberg pads made famous by Ryan Miller. Yeah, it's become a pretty popular style. We've seen quite a few netminders wearing them here at the Maryville University Hockey Center this season. I just got to say, Schiller's pads look a lot cleaner than Ed Coffey's does. You say white with red, but with all those black marks blocking pucks on the season, I don't know if it's really exactly white, the color I would use to describe it anymore. Some wear and tear on those pads over the course of the season. The great debate, what color is <laughs> what here on... It's, a, it's an eggshell. It's a yeah. new segment here on the Maryville <laughs> Saints Hockey Network during broadcast. And that one's turned over. Chuck thinks it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Shot by Mudra. A hit off a skate. Under five remaining here in the second period. Stokes with it at the red line. He'll guide it in. Going back for it is Josh Tack. Tack spins away for Hunter, Hunter off the stick of Gagan, and that one goes into the bench. 
maybe off of body because the puck is still on the ice. 439 left to go here in the second period. Yeah, you gotta wonder, if, I don't know if you guys remember this, but the, the old dress, the, the gold and white dress or the blue and black dress, yes. remember that? Blew up the internet years ago. Rumor has it, Chuck thinks it's red. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, Todd thinks it's black and white. <laughs> I think I was, <laughs> I was white gray. and gold, I remember. Shades of gray. <laughs> Redirected shot, and that one stopped by Ed Coffey. 434 left here in the second period. So a lot of back and forth action here in this second game of this two game series between these two MCH opponents. Maryville comes out with it. Off the glove of Jared Viggers. He'll throw it forward. Schiller out of his net. Quick shot, that one, into the skates. Luke McLeod picks it up. McLeod bumped off the puck. Up top to the blue line. D to D, tack. Able to throw it down low. McLeod to his backhand to Charche. Charche to Viggers. Up top to Josh Tack. Time and Prexler fires one on. That one off a of body. Near side half wall. Charche with it. Has time and space. Feeds it down low for Vigors. Vigors gets it back. Charche is there for support. Tack over to Prexler. Prexler shoots one on. Not enough mustard on it. Gets it back. Prexler looking for Charche. A hit off a stick. Charche with it. Good offensive zone pressure by the Saints. Tack. D to D to Prexler once again. Prexler back to Charche. Charche fires one on. Rebound and it's sent down the ice. Arm is up. And that will be an icing. 3.24 left to go here in the second period. Still a 5-4 game. And that might have been one of the most dominant display of offense that we've seen so far from the Saints here in this second game. Yeah, ideally, you'd like to see Charche take the one-timer there, try to get it into the empty net before the goaltender can recover, but he does hit it off a couple times and uh, let uh, Schiller get back into position. Timeout called by Waldorf. 3.24 left to go here in the second period. Interesting decision to take the timeout in the second period, but... I think that's a coach understanding the situation with his team. They're gassed after that icing call. They were stuck out there. Now you call the timeout, you can get some fresh legs. No, I, I agree with you there. I think that's just a timeout to get some breathers for your players. And like you said, fresh legs on the ice as well because that was a long, very active defensive shift for Waldorf University. They really need a breather here. Those players, you know, they're gassed out there right now. And now they have to go back out defensively against Maryville, licking their chops, trying to regain a two-goal lead in the final 324 of the second period. Really appropriate time by their head coach, Michael Heitkamp, to take that timeout. So an offensive zone, offensive zone draw coming for the Saints. They lose it. Back forward is Didi. Breakout pass intercepted by the Saints. Will Smith taken down and power play coming for the Saints with 3.12 left to go here in the second period. A holding call. Looks like it's going to go against Zach Jimenez. And we saw Jimenez get a little bit overzealous and he kind of got away with it in yesterday's contest, he straight up threw a punch right into the cage of Matt Edgecombe. Uh, Edgecombe obviously answered, and both of them were sent out for those 10-minute misconducts, but easily could have been kicked out for the game. And he's been a little bit more quiet here tonight, but uh, sometimes the frustration just kind of builds up, and he ends up getting called for it there. And it's been some sloppy hockey for Waldorf today in terms of playing clean. This is now the sixth penalty they've committed throughout this game so far. One of those a five-minute major. I mean, they keep constantly putting themselves in holes against Maryville and allowing Maryville to get on the power play. Far side, top of the circle. Wrist one on, and that one redirected to the near side half wall. Stavro 
Thought about shooting. Prexler back to Stavro. Stavro walks one in. Oh, what a shot and what a better save. Snagging that one is Nelson Schiller. Usually the rule is arm down, man down. Schiller didn't have his arm up to glove that right away, but he was still able to pull his arm quick enough to snatch that one out of the air and rob Stavro of a goal. Face off one by Waldorf. Taken over by the Saints. Prexler looking for Stavro. It comes out of the zone at the red line. Timon Prexler will settle the puck down, bring it back into his own zone. Right inside the blue line, find Stavro. Stavro, pass behind Timon Prexler as he tries to get the puck in. There's a battle right inside the Waldorf zone. It's sent down the length of the ice, and Prexler will go back for it as Coffey will leave it for Timon Prexler. Skates up ice at the dot, looks up, little head fake, makes a move at the big red M, enters into the zone, loses the puck, and it's sent back the length of the ice once again. Now Anthony Stavro will pick it up as a minute has gone by here in the, the Maryville power play. Trevor Henson with it at the red line. Effortlessly glides into the zone on his backhand. One hand on his stick, loses the puck. Maryville still has it shot on, and that one snagged out of midair by Nelson Schiller as Lucas Adams could have buried that one. It looked like he whiffed on it, and it just trickled up into the air and snagged by Schiller. If he does not get a glove on that, I don't believe that goes over the net. I think it goes right under the bar and into the back of the net. I agree entirely. Adams kind of mishit that one a little bit, and I think it would have lollipopped over Schiller and into the net. Great save by him with the glove once again. Jack Harrison around to Brad Boudreaux, near side, that pass off a stick comes out of the zone. Henson has to go back for it at the red line. Thought about dropping it, he faked it. Fires one on, off the blocker. Waldorf able to smack it out of the zone. Going back for it, Jackson White. He's trailed by Nelson. Henson with it at the blue line, makes a move. Henson gets it in deep. And on the four check, Luke McLeod and the big defenseman Trevor Henson. Sent around the boards, off the glass, kept in by the Saints. Could have been another penalty there by Waldorf as the stick of Heitkamp was caught up in, in between McLeod. Henson with it. Less than a minute to go here in the second period. On his backhand to Jack Harrison, a one-touch pass to McLeod. Puck kept in, sent back down low. Jimenez there as he's taken down below the goal line. Big hit by Trevor Henson. Jack Harrison, the captain, picks it up on his backhand. McLeod, he'll glide it down the ice. It will be an icing with 28.1 seconds remaining here in the second period. And it's an important faceoff win now for Maryville. We've seen some tired guys back in the defensive end. Trevor Henson with the stick over the head, just kind of gliding back. So they need to get possession to get this out quick. Sent around the boards, picked up by McLeod. It went, actually went under a stick and sent back into the zone. Less than 20 remaining here in the second period. And they really got to get it deep in the offensive zone to get a change. Second period, long change defensively for Maryville. They haven't been able to get it past the neutral zone yet. One last gasp for the Saints. Harrison in, shot off the, off the stick. And Harrison lays a big hit, shot wide, and that'll do it for the second period. So the Saints head into the intermission with a 5-4 lead. Of course, more extracurriculars happening after the horn. We'll and I see. think they might have just sent Hentz into the box. Either that or they told him to get out of here. The official pointed Got to Henson and pointed him away. And he just said something to Coach Hogan. Now he's going over to the penalty box. We might have a Waldorf power play to begin the third period. We'll see how things play out here in the third period. Don't go anywhere. Chuck 
is not with us anymore. <laughs> Todd Panula and Sean Malone will break things down here in our intermission report. We'll be right back. Saints lead 5-4 to four over the Warriors. You're watching Maryville Saints Hockey right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Red Creek Roofing, wherever you live from. Bridgetown to Baldwin, Brentwood to Kirkwood, St. Anne to St. Charles, wherever you live. Hazelwood to Maplewood, the name you know. Red Creek Roofing, wherever you go. For a hole in your roof, or a home new roof. Red Creek Roofing. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. A lot of the times, uh, students that are thinking about entering our program, they have a lot of questions. They've done their research. Uh, a lot of the questions that the students have are based upon outcomes. Where am I going to be four years from now if I decide to be in the Rawlings Sport Business Manager Program? Here, I'll show you. Here's where our alumni work now. We have students working in the athletic department at universities. We have students working for sports teams. We have students working for sports agencies, whether it be an abstract marketing, a Learfield Sports, an IMG. Uh, those are a lot of the organizations that are hiring our students. And we do have a lot of our alumni who do work for sports teams, uh, be, whether it be uh, the Houston Rockets, um, the Kansas City Royals, the St. Louis Cardinals, St. Louis Blues. Uh, many of our students have worked for those agencies and continue to work for those types of organizations now. Howie's Stretch Grip Tape is a self-adhering cushiony gauze for better grip at the end of your knob. It's spongy for maximized comfort and cushion on your gloves, and it's soft yet abrasive to ensure the best grip. Howie's Pro Grip Tape is self-adhering with no adhesive to create an all-around grip on your stick knob. It uses a thinner material than our Stretch Grip Tape to create a coarse abrasive tack on your gloves, and it's used around the globe by professionals. I enjoy working with Lauren because she's really consistent, she follows up, she makes the process as quick as she can, and just really helps get you in, get you out, and make sure you know everything you need to. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I bought a 2021 Ford Edge for my company today from Lauren Sutter. So my company is expanding their sales force and needed to equip our new business managers with a vehicle and we reached out to Lauren at Lou Fuse uh, to get them with the right SUV. She helped us find the 2021 Ford Edge. I pur purchased my first one from her um, a couple months ago and the process was so painless and easy that I'm back again for my second one and we'll be back again probably in a couple months to um, buy another. I think somebody would come buy a vehicle from Lauren at Lou Fuse if they're looking for an easy process, somebody who is not going to um, guide them in the wrong direction and help them get exactly what they're looking for. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not 
not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. CCM one piece boot. The CCM one piece boot. If I had these in my day, I could have been Connor McDavid. I could have been Connor McDavid. Anyone could be Connor McDavid. Helps make your feet faster, gives you a closer fit. Anyone can be Connor McDavid. Looking sharp, bud. Good thing you got that one piece boot, you duster. This is the MSHN Intermission Report, brought to you by the following. Aero Charter, your private plane experts in St. Louis. Welcome back to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network, second intermission, two periods in the books, and Waldorf made things interesting, five to four, now the score through two periods of play. And I mentioned it in period, and I, I know you saw the same thing. Waldorf brought a different level of energy in the second period compared to the first. Yeah, and I think that kind of took the Saints by surprise, the fact that they didn't just roll over. And, and again, it goes back to the fact that it's a conference matchup between these two teams. Waldorf came out, they struck with the early goal. They scored three goals in just about three minutes. And I think they really pushed the Saints back onto their heels. But Maryville was able to find an answer with a power play goal, and that makes the difference so far through 40 minutes. Yeah, and that's why Maryville is back out in front. I think it's a much different conversation we're having right now about the seriousness of this game. If Maryville doesn't get that one goal in the period, heads into the locker room tied up at 4-4. Do want to update you on the situation heading into the third period as well. Trevor Henson was hit with a penalty for Maryville. He got two minutes for unsportsmanlike after the final whistle or the horn had sounded to end the second period. So Waldorf is going to get a power play for the first two minutes of the third period. I think it's a very different conversation if Maryville is, da is tied up compared to up a goal heading into the third period with that knowledge because now it's not, okay, Waldorf has a chance to tie it up. It's, okay, now Waldorf might take the lead on us to begin the period. Not exactly ideal still. You blew a three-goal lead. But I think a, there's a little comfort in that from Maryville because they got that goal back. Yeah, they get a little bit of breathing room due to that goal. And, and as I mentioned during the contest, I think it was a situation to where, given everything that had transpired, the fact that it was all tied up at that point, you're given a five-minute power play, you you got to get at least one. Because if Waldorf kills off that entire five-minute power play, the amount of momentum that is on their side regardless of uh, how it ends up with the, this Henson penalty, it, it just keeps everything rolling for the Warriors. Instead, Maryville, with a little bit of breathing room now, they go into the, the locker room. Obviously, Coach Hogan's not going to be happy about that late penalty, especially since it wasn't something that was part of the play. So it's really not necessarily something they needed or wanted. But at least you have a little bit of breathing room due to the fact that they got that one goal on the power play and at least made the defense for Waldorf work on that five-minute power play as well. Yeah, let's take a look at that one goal from Will Smith that we talked about. It came at the 7.37 mark, uh, 7.37 remaining in the second period. You see, Maryville's got it on the far side, and the defender leaves Will Smith. It's a miscommunication. He must have thought someone else is there because you don't want to leave the guy right in front of the net unmanned. Will Smith gets it. He's got all the time in the world, works it to his backhand, goes top shelf, Easy goal, 5-4 to four Maryville, but well, that mistake from Waldorf coming back to haunt them in that second period, uh, uh, and there were a number of penalties commit in that period by Waldorf as well. They commit four penalties in that period. They've had six throughout this game so far. If things go a little different, you know, with the offense that Waldorf had in that second period, without all those penalties, this may be a different game we're talking about here. Yeah, if they can kind of keep their composure, then Maryville maybe doesn't have two of the goals that they scored since they've got two on the power play right now. And it's a situation to where uh, Maryville needs to keep out of the box themselves because Waldorf doesn't have a power play goal. They're 0 for 1. But you know that those calls are going to come. Like the refs, they, they, they never will admit to it, but... They even stuff up. You, you know how many penalties you've called on one team versus the other. 
And if Maryville does something silly, then they're going to put him in the box. And now that might be what we had with Henson there at the end of the period. But it was a situation to where Maryville's at least managed to capitalize on a couple of their opportunities. But it's been kind of an interesting game for Waldorf. They, they obviously had that flurry of activity where they got the three goals. But to your point, they've also made some mistakes. Uh, why that defender vacated that area is kind of questionable. I think he was trying to cheat. Maybe he thought they were going to try to hook up with a stretch pass across the ice to Alvergren, who was at the point, because he was cheating out that direction. But I'm not really sure what you accomplish by doing that. It's probably a smarter play to keep close to the net, guard that guy that's in front, let the shot come from distance if the Saints manage to get it across there. Instead, they find a man in the middle, and Alvergren was able to finish it off with some good patience. Yeah, so that kept uh, the game in Maryville's favor. 5-4, to four, they retook the lead because of that one goal. You're watching the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Two periods in, Maryville holding a 5-4 to four advantage. We've got the third period coming up next on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. Never tasted this good. Keegan with How Ice Hockey Tape, and today we're going to be talking about using a skate stone. Skate stones are a pre-game or an in-game tool to help sharpen dull or nicked blades that have lost their edge. When you're using a skate stone, it's extremely important to remember never to touch the bottom of the blade. It's only to be used on the side. So what you're going to do, take your skate stone, and you're just going to make a couple passes along the side of the blade, not using too much pressure or too little pressure, just making a couple passes on both sides. Using the skate stone is just a temporary fix. It's not a good substitute for getting your skate sharpened. Make sure to get your skates to your trusted skate shop for the perfect cut. Hi, and 
welcome to Maryville Hockey. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville University Hockey Center right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Todd Panula and Sean Malone. Four men on the ice for the Saints as an unsportsmanlike conduct from Trevor Henson ended the period. And the Waldorf Warriors will have an opportunity here at the start of the third to tie this one up. It's a 5-4 game. Will Smith, he broke the tie with a beautiful backhanded shot. And Waldorf is looking to knot this one up here early in the third period. Mike Camp to the near side over to Morell down low. Far side corner. Sticks in the lane. That was... Jack Harrison and a shot on, stopped by Ed Coffey. 31 seconds have gone by in the Trevor Henson minor. Yeah, and this is an important penalty kill for Maryville. Early in the period, you get the fresh ice. Waldorf able to get established in the offensive zone, so Maryville needs to win some of these face-offs and get it out. Fresh ice and fresh legs. It's not like Waldorf's gassed as if they've played the majority or even part of a period. This is as fresh as they're going to be here on out. Luke McLeod picks it up all by himself. On his forehand, he'll stop. Trying to eat some clock. Hit by Jared Viggers. Picked up by Waldorf. Here they come. Heitkamp on his backhand. That one is guided to the corner by Ed Coffey as he makes the stop. Buck in the corner, picked up by Heitkamp once again. McLeod loses it, had it for a second. In the corner, battling for the puck. Luke Wright feeds it to Nelson, up top of the blue line, Morell to Heitkamp. Top of the circle, shot on, and able to make the stop is Ed Coffey, pushing and shoving right in front of the netminder, Ed Coffey. 18.45 left to go here in the third period. And Waldorf probably a little bit lucky that there hasn't been more physicality on that after that play by Maryville because, again, they took a little bit of a jab at Ed Coffey. And, and I understand you're hoping that the puck might be loose. You don't know when the whistle's going to come, but he had clean control of that one, and all of a sudden the spear just kind of comes out. And so I like the defenseman standing up for Ed Coffey there. Teams are going to do that, especially forwards. You got to be sure to send the message that if you're going to do that, you're going to get a little something for it. Wrist shot on, puck is loose, slapped away by the Saints. That was Jack Harrison. Out of his cage is Schiller. He'll fire it down. Off the skate, turned over. Smith in, Smith forehand drags to his backhand. Oh, a big hit. Smith able to get back up. Real nice hip check by Zach Morrill to knock Will Smith off the puck. Waldorf skates up the ice. 15 seconds left to go on their power play. Here they come. Nelson makes a couple moves with, with the puck still. Fires one up to the blue line. Kept in to the far side. Off the wall. With it, Luke Wright. He's taken down by Jackson White. Going the other way, Smith has Charche with him. Smith, he'll float it into the zone. Charche racing after the puck. Sent around the boards. Henson there. Fires one on. That one off a skate. Stokes with it. He'll leave it for Heitkamp. Heitkamp with it. Looks up. Still with the puck. Top of the circle. He'll just settle things down and go back behind his own net as the Warriors will, will get some fresh bodies out on the ice. Rib ink with it. Near side. Stokes. At the red line, floats it in. 17-20 left to go here in the third period. Still a 5-4 game, Saints lead. Prexler, he finds Gagan to Mudra. Mudra to Alvagren. That one in his skates. And an offsides has been called with 17-08 left to go here in the third period. We've seen that happen several times throughout this game to where the puck just doesn't want to sit for Maryville for some reason, whether it's been a, a puck that just kind of squirts away from the stick and they take a couple jabs at it and still miss or a play like that to where it just kind of gets caught up in the skates and won't go onto the tape. Bender rims it around the boards. Tack trying to keep it in. He can't. Going back for it is Garrett Hunter. Hunter with it on his forehand in the near side corner. Loses the puck. Turned over. Spinning away with it. 
Sweeney. Sweeney still with the puck as he's trying to kick at it, looking for a call. Josh Tack picks it up. Skates with it up the ice, near side, hits his own blue line, looks up at the red line, finds Boudreaux. Boudreaux trying to make a move, can't get behind Bender, the defense for Waldorf. Puck pinned up against the boards, right inside the zone. It comes out of the zone. Back for it is Trevor Henson at his own blue line. He'll go D to D to Tack. Tack plays it back for Henson. Henson makes a move at the blue line, at the red line. Pushes his man forward as Lucas Adams tries to corral it. Still has it. Adams in. Oh, his shot. Looked like he fanned on it. The puck able to stay in the zone because of a stick that was just lying there on the ice. Jackson White picks it up. White puts it in the corner. Adams, Boudreaux. Boudreaux a shot. That one off a stick and wide. Henson feeds it down low. It's intercepted. Going the other way. Austin Mood flag. Mood flag all by himself, has height camp driving as well. Mood flag shoots one wide. Jackson White will rim it around the boards. It's kept in by Jimenez. Brad Boudreau able to pick it up at his own dot. He'll play it back for Henson, and Boudreau will change. Right in front of his own net, Henson. That was a risky play. Waldorf going the other way. Here they come. Nelson. In, shot on, and a stop made by Ed Coffey. 15-11 left to go here in the third period. Maryville, 31 shots. Waldorf, 20. Waldorf with it, shot off a of body wide. Smith. Pokes it back below the goal line. Tack with it. Breakout pass to TJ Prexler. He's knocked off of his feet, but he's able to get the puck out. That one high and hard off the glass. Going back the other way. Smith with it. Smith on his backhand. Spins. So he takes a check. Gets it back. Smith gets tangled up with the referee. Tack shoots one, and that one blocked off his stick. Nelson going the other way with it for Waldorf. But coming back is the defense and Josh Tack. His pass into the skates of Jimenez, turned over. Nelson on his backhand, stops, loses the puck. Maryville able to get it out, it's slapped back in the zone. Going back forward is Josh Tack. Tack will make the pass to his defense partner and Timon Prexler, stretch pass into the skates of TJ Prexler. Going back for it. Trevor Henson as he sets up shot behind the cage. Henson with it. He finds Jared Vigors up the middle. Vigors with speed. Vigors in. TJ Prexler. McLeod, his shot, and that one stopped by Schiller. 13.57 left to go here in the third period. Probably the best opportunity for the Saints here in the third frame. Certainly the cleanest looking one. I mean, that was perfect passing on breaking in, perfect spacing as well. It's not going to go in the net every time, but that's a positive for Maryville. Puck is loose after the faceoff. Waldorf comes out with it. Lindblom floats it forward, gloved down in the neutral zone. Puck is still bouncing. It's at the blue line and sent in off the shin pad of Henson. McLeod unable to get it out, trying to cut to the middle with Sweeney. Lost his footing. McLeod able to dish it to Anthony Stavro. Stavro enters into the zone. Stavro loses his handle of the puck. Taken down was Luke McLeod. Maryville head into the power play once again. 13-25 left to go here in the third. I didn't really see anybody touch the puck for Waldorf to draw that whistle. Might have glanced off of the stick, but even so, you have to have full possession of the puck to get that whistle. But this is another key power play for the Saints. They've got two power play goals to their name already. They'd really like to get another one just to get a little bit of breathing room in this game. Obviously, the offense has shown up more tonight than it did yesterday, but still just a one-goal game. And it's Jacob Lindblom who heads to the penalty box. Going to be a tough loss for Waldorf to try to overcome. Face-off won by the Warriors as... Puck comes around to the near side, up top to the blue line for Timon Prexler. 
Stavro, slap shot on that one off the pad. A little too far out into the zone with that rebound. Prexler goes back for it as he's tangled up with Nelson. Prexler with it. Skates up the ice, near side, hits the red line. And he'll go off sides as he was tangled up. Unable to drag the foot. 13 minutes on the dot left to go here in the third period. 36 seconds, or 100, 100. A minute 36 left to go in the power play for the Saints. Face off won by the Saints. Henson, he'll go D to D with Jackson White. White inside of his own zone. Back to Henson. Henson at the blue line. He'll play it back for White. White to his backhand, hits the red line, enters into the zone as he pushes it forward. He'll race after it on the four check. The, the defenseman for the Saints has it. Ooh, looking back door for Jack Harrison. Henson over to Boudreaux. Boudreaux, a wrist shot. That one knocked down. Boudreaux gets it back. Henson settles it. Back to Boudreaux. Fires one on, and that one's wide. Henson racing after it, keeps the puck in the zone. Jackson White to Henson, into his skates. Henson back to White, fakes the slap shot, down low. Looking for McLeod, has him. McLeod off the skate. Henson going to have to race after it, keeps the puck. Here's Henson, top of the circle, over to Boudreaux. Boudreaux can't handle the pass, gets it back, feeds it back up to the blue line. Henson drags. Oh, and he loses the puck. White with it. Back down low. McLeod trying to get it to the net. Picked up by Harrison as he helps out using his body. He'll cycle it back up top to the blue line for Henson. Henson walks into one, fires one on, and does he score? Oh. Did it go in the back of the net? Now the it officials did. are going to have to get together because the whistle did blow. But if one of them saw it cleanly in the back of the net, that's going to be a goal. Trevor Henson skating to the bench. He might have just made it a 6-4 game. It's up to the linesmen and the referees who are going to make this decision, the officials. Let's see what they decide. Judging by the body language, it looks like they're trying to inform Brad Boudreaux of what's going on. Brad Boudreaux should be celebrating right now. I don't think this is going to count. Yeah, I think they're going to say that they intended to blow it dead before it snuck in wow but it no seemed goal. pretty quick that it went in maryville was reacting right about the whistle interesting call there so if you really want to even things out that's two goals for both teams that have been taken away due to an early whistle so if you want to play by the rules we're being fair here it could still it could be a 6-5 game if we're being honest Either way, Maryville still on the power play. 20 seconds remaining on their power play. Here's Stavro. Little head bob. Shoots one on. That one stopped. And Schiller will get to his feet. 12 seconds remaining here on the Maryville power play. 11.36 remaining here in the third period. But, guys, you talk about timing, and that one could really hurt Maryville if – Waldorf were to get back in this game. So Maryville needs to make sure they get the next one. Stavro to Prexler. Time in Prexler. Slap shot. That one up and out of play. Four seconds remaining on the minor two, Jacob Limblom from Pine City, Minnesota. I don't know if that ever came down. I think that got stuck in the ceiling rafters somewhere. Face-off coming for the Saints to the glove side of Nelson Schiller. Saints get it back up top to the blue line. Shot on that one well wide and high of the net. Waldorf able to get it out, and a whistle has been blown. So we're back to five-on-five five hockey here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Saints lead by one. It's five to four. That Will Smith. Backhanded goal so far is the one that makes Maryville have this lead. You guys smell that syrup? Icing called 
I mean, you got to believe the reason why that was an icing because Luke Wright was well off sides when he went to go try and snare that puck. Yeah, it's been an interesting night for the officials. They've had to kind of be on their toes, and we've seen a couple that uh, they were a little quick with the whistles. Sometimes you'd like to see them allow those plays to go, but as you pointed out, a good icing call there because uh, the guy wouldn't have been allowed to touch the puck legally anyway. Puck at the blue line. Henson fires one on wide. Trying to poke at it was Garrett Hunter. It's coming out of the zone. Opportunity for Waldorf. Shot. That one off a stick and out of play. 10.56 remaining here in the third period. Ooh. There's a broken twig and a stop made by Ed Coffey. Broken and sent for a ride as well. That was a big slap shot that Heitkamp wound up with. And the stick just gave out on it and went flying through the air. Yeah, that must have had some torque on it for the, the blade part to flip up about 10, 15 feet up in the air. And he doesn't have an extra stick on the bench with him. He had to go back to the locker room quick to get a new piece of wood to play with. Offensive zone face-off draw coming for Waldorf, and we'll do it again. This time won by Maryville. Another twig leaving the arms or the, the, the hands of a Waldorf player. Far side, Garrett Hunter drags it. Still has it at the circle, a shot, and that one up and over the net. Picked up by Smith. He shoots one on, and that one stopped by Schiller. 10.28 left to go here in the third. Give credit to Schiller. After a four-goal first period, I thought maybe take him out of the game. He's really settled down here. A lot of that has to do with his defense stepping up, not allowing as many shots on goal, but he's made a couple really nice saves throughout this game, especially here in this third period. Waldorf with it. They rim it around the boards. Kept in by the Saints. Time and Prexler goes off the boards. It's gloved down. Far side. Trying to poke at it. Waldorf, they get it out. Nice move by Time and Prexler. Regains possession for the Saints. Lucas Adams with it. Adams loses the puck. Spins away in the corner. Helping him out is Brad Boudreau. Boudreau pins the puck up against the boards. On the half wall near side. And another penalty coming against the Warriors. So Maryville back to the power play once again. This time, another opportunity to pad the lead as they only lead by one with less than 10 minutes left to go in this one. 9.59 remaining on the clock. It's going to be the eighth penalty that's been committed by Waldorf so far this game. That's one thing they're going to circle back to and they're talking about reasons why they didn't come away with the victory, assuming they can't come back here. Yeah, if you're the Saints, though, this is a situation where, like, each additional penalty that Waldorf takes makes it that much more paramount that you score and make them pay for going into the sin bin so many times in this game. Maryville has possession of the puck. Stavro, top of the circle, makes a few moves, still with it. He'll spin away, drops it for Prexler. Prexler to Adams, back to time in Prexler. Wrist one on that one, redirected. Adams trying to spin around and feed it to Stavro. Stavro at the blue line, throws it down low for Smith. Smith, using his body, able to fall and get the puck to Lucas Adams. Prexler at the blue line. Prexler looks up, wrist one on in that one into the glove of Schiller. Whistle blown, 9.26 left to go here in the third. Yeah, I like the idea of taking that shot, maybe keep it a little bit lower, look to try, try to bank it off the pad or maybe slip it five hole. And the level that he put that on, a goaltender's going to take that nine times out of ten because they, they they love that glove hand side, especially if you're going to put it in that area. Saints win the faceoff. 
White shoots that one off the stick of Jack Harrison, who's planted himself right in front of Schiller. That's exactly where you want to be. Top of the circle, Boudreaux. White shot on that one off of a Waldorf shin pad. White still with it, tries to take it to the middle of the ice, and it's taken and sent out of the zone. Nine minutes left to go here in the third period as we approach the one-minute mark left to go in the Maryville power play. They need to capitalize on this to make it a two-goal game. White skates up the ice, far side, sauce pass. Harrison is knocked to his feet, or not to his feet, knocked off of his feet, and that one is smothered by Schiller. Now how often do you see Harrison get knocked to the ice like that? While not being the biggest at 5'10", 170, he is usually one of the more physical players, and he does a good job, especially as a two-way player, keeping his head on a swivel, knowing where everyone's at at all times. This time, he kind of got locked in on the puck. Defenseman saw it and just went right at him, knew he had an easy check. McLeod able to win the faceoff for the Saints. Shot on and right into the glove once again of Schiller. 8.40 left to go here in the third. Seems like Maryville these last two periods keep trying to beat Schiller on the glove side. And he's had a couple really nice glove saves as well. I don't know if you maybe need to just pick a different spot. But Schiller's done a nice job with those gloves today. Face off one by the Saints. Stavro with it. At the blue line, feeds it for Adams. Adams back to Stavro. Stavro, Adams, slap shot on. That one stopped. Adams gets it back. Another shot. And that one bounces. Prexler is there to pick it up to Stavro. Stavro, oh, right off the skate of Lucas Adams. Adams, a diving play to try and eliminate that opportunity for Waldorf. Waldorf able to get possession of the puck and they'll throw it out of the zone. 10 seconds remaining on the power play for the Saints. So we approach the eight minute mark left to go here in the third period. Timon Prexler enters into the zone, drops it for his brother TJ, who sends it around the boards, far side corner. Cole Mudra. That's Will Smith, feeds it down low in front. Stavro, ooh, he's pushed off the puck and a whistle has been blown. 7.48 left to go here in the third period. Reminder that no team has a timeout left in this game. And you have to figure if it stays a one goal game, that could really become a factor, especially if one of these teams is tired late in the game and you're in a defensive zone face off situation. You don't have that uh, timeout in your back pocket. So face off. And a shot right off the faceoff by Cole Mudra, hit off a stick out of play. We'll do it again. Saints get it. Josh Tack fires one on and off a stick. And Cole Mudra loses his twig. We'll try it once more. And you almost feel like this kind of slow, choppy game falls into the Waldorf category a little bit better because the more face-offs you have, the more stoppages you have, that takes out the flow of the, the more high-powered offensive team and allows the team that's uh, not expected to win more opportunities to catch them on a break. Just like this, pushing it forward, Josh Tack. Jacob Lindblom right in front. Picked up by Hunter. Hunter, near side corner, goes off the glass. Stokes in there for the Warriors. Keeping it in is Heitkamp. Cole Mudra picks it up. Mudra feeds it for Albegran. Albegran floats it forward for Gagan. It's picked up by Heitkamp for the Warriors. He looks up, stretch pass off the stick. Good job by Garrett Hunter to get a stick in there. And now it goes off the stick of Vigors with less than seven left to go here in the third period. Another whistle. This time it'll be an offensive zone faceoff coming for Waldorf. But again, that's a play that Waldorf will take anytime you can give it to him. They were just gonna send kind of a blind shot from the near side wall. Likely would have been an easy save. I understand why Vigors goes for the block, but it ends up with a faceoff win for Waldorf. That shot blocked, picked up by Maryville, up the near side boards, big hit. On Will Smith, he gets up. Jackson White steps up. The defenseman for Maryville shot on. That one off the side of the cage. Comes out front, and that one redirected off a skate 
and a big stop by Nelson Schiller. That could have been a costly goal and one that really wouldn't have been anybody's fault. Now, Vickers was just trying to center it, just send it to the front of the net, and it deflected off of a Waldorf warrior and almost found its way through. But like you said, Schiller, Johnny on the spot, able to stop that puck with a quick reaction. Faceoff coming to the blocker's side of Schiller. Waldorf wins it. They send it around the boards near side corner. Vigors stops. Pinned up against the boards. Poking at it is J Luke McLeod. Vigors gets it back. That one comes out front. Sent out of the zone. It's going to be all the way down for an icing. Lots of whistles in this one. Ton of whistles. Still less than seven minutes left to go here in the third period. Especially here in the third period, we've had a lot of stoppages, just not a flow to this game at all. Uh, and it's kind of odd to say that when you've had nine goals put in the back of the net, but it's just been very choppy and very methodical, especially here in the uh, third. I don't need to explain it anymore. Another whistle. <laughs> right on cue. Offsides. Well, it's been a very weird period compared to the first two. You know, the first one, all Maryville. The second period, all Waldorf. And here, like you said, with the start and stop play, it's kind of led to some slowing down of the offense. No one can really get a long possession going. Timon Prexler to Josh Tack. Tack intercepted. Able to get it out of the zone. And Vigors is there at the red line. Dumps it in deep. Schiller out of his cage to his backhand. Waldorf looks in, looking to exit their zone. They go high and hard off the glass. Josh Tack going back for the puck. Tack with it. Off the boards to his defense partner and Tynan Prexler. Prexler near side at the blue line. Finds McLeod. McLeod able to corral it. McLeod to his backhand. Forehand shot on. And Schiller makes the stop. 5.39 left to go here in the third. And again, that, it ends up leading to another stoppage, which isn't necessarily the best for the, the game but not a bad idea to throw that in on net because there was a little bit of a room between the goaltender and the post you might catch them cheating which we've seen in the couple games here this weekend but just not on that play so Waldorf able to take possession of the puck but they lose it that one goes off the stanchion or off the glass and then out of play or not out of play but down the length of the ice goes off the glove of Josh Tack once again goes to Timon Prexler off the stick of Joey Gagan inside the zone of Waldorf. Stretch pass off the skate now of Timon Prexler. He'll go back for it. He's chased by Jacob Lindblom. Poking it forward, Prexler unable to get the puck out. Stokes tries to feed one out front. A good defensive play by Josh Tack, taking away that passing lane. Stokes, top of the blue line, Bender feeds it down low, skips over the stick of Lindblom. Lucas Adams with it. Christian Alvagran able to get the puck out of the zone. Bender at the blue line, enters into the Saints zone. Tack with it, he'll throw it around the boards. That puck stays in the zone as it's picked up by Mood Flag. Intercepted by Maryville. Adams with it. He can't get it out. Luckily, Trevor Henson is there on his backhand, floats it down the ice for an icing. 4.28 left to go here in the third period. Yeah, and that was just kind of a mental error there by Henson. Put too much mustard on that one. As his uh, teammates were trying to get off for a change. Now they're caught out there after the icing call. Face off one by the Saints. Far side, Lucas Adams looks up into the skates of Stavro. Stavro. Off the stick of Boudreaux, enters into the Waldorf zone. He stops, floats one down below the goal line. Heitkamp on his backhand, rims it around the boards. Hunter's there, lays a check on Carson Cool. Picked up by the Warriors in the corner, below the net, or below the goal line behind the net. Henson steps up. Puck picked up by Boudreaux, near side half wall. Boudreaux with it. As the ref has to jump out of the way, Boudreaux on his backhand to the front. That one off a stick. Coming out of the zone, here comes the Warriors. Mood flag, unable to get around Henson as it comes out of the zone. Picking up the puck, Kesselhan, his pass off a of body, 
Boudreaux spinning around, gets the puck back after the pass was made by Anthony Stavro. Heitkamp picks it up, 3.30 left to go here in the third period. 5-4, Maryville leads. Waldorf taking some time, they're eating clock. Not sure if I would do this. I think I would try and move the puck forward. Yeah, if I'm Maryville, I'm content with this. I don't know why pressing forward is vigorous. Just kind of let him stay there. Cross ice pass onto the tape. Nice move by Luke Wright. Shoots one on. It's blocked. Able to punch it forward and get it out of the zone is Jake Chartier. Height camp. Off the stick of Wright. Going back forward is Henson. Less than three to go here in the third period. Good fake by Trevor Henson as he skates up ice. Head up all the way, sauce pass on the backhand of Charche, a little too far out front. Picked up by, oh, and a penalty coming. Oh my goodness. Trevor Henson can't believe it. He's going to, he's going to the box. And that's one of those penalties that it's all about the visual. There wasn't a whole lot in the check. Uh, Nelson kind of turned into that one, made it look worse than it probably was. But there's also the physical disparity. Henson quite a bit taller than Nelson. So it just doesn't pass the eye test. And the, given the position on the ice that the official was, I understand why that call gets made, whether you agree with it or not. Now here's a situation where you've got two minutes, 45 seconds left of the game. Those first two minutes are going to be a penalty kill for Maryville. They're only up by a goal. This is why it was important earlier for them to capitalize on the power plays they got that they weren't able to. So Waldorf trying to tie this one up. Jack Harrison unable to get the puck out. A good save by Ed Coffey. Waldorf sets things up in the Maryville zone. Here's Heitkamp. Backdoor shot on, blocked off a skate and sent down the ice. One thing to keep in mind too, that power play would have been a perfect opportunity for Waldorf to take a timeout. But they burned yeah. that timeout earlier, so now late in the game, they don't have the chance to take a timeout and freshen up their legs a little bit for one last push to try to get a game-tying goal. They enter into the zone, Stokes with it. That pass off the stick. Hunter pressuring Stokes. Stokes in the corner, throws it around the other way. Luke McLeod racing after it for the Saints. McLeod with it. Down low, back up to Height Camp. Shot on. Puck pinned up against the boards near side half wall. Clock is ticking down. Less than 140 left to go here in the third period. Less than a minute left to go on the Waldorf power play. Got to wonder if the goalie will be pulled. He's creeping out a little bit. Height Camp with it. Shot on. Redirected. Stop made. Oh my goodness. Picking it up. Jack Harrison. Stays in the zone. Below the goal line. Less than 30 left to go on the power play. Puck below the goal line once again. Up top to the blue line, height camp. Goalie has not been pulled yet. Dragging that. Backdoor good stick in the lane by Lucas Adams. Less than a minute left to go here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. That one is sent out of the zone. That'll pretty much do it for the power play. A stretch pass. Schiller, he finds Lindblom. Shot on. That's stopped by Coffey. What a Puck. great save by Coffey. Puck stays in the zone. Up top to the blue line. There goes Schiller. Slap shot. That one. It is stopped by Ed Coffey. Had to hold my breath there for a second. 31 seconds left to go. It's going to be six on five with the extra attacker as Schiller is on the bench. Yeah, I don't know if that puck got caught on the side netting. The officials were checking something out over along the side of the goal, but Ed Coffey didn't look too comfortable with wherever that puck went. That's Another opportunity that Waldorf could have used a timeout. They elect to take it in the second period. Time and Prexler, high and hard off the glass. It skips out of the zone. Charche to end it. Oh no, he misses the net. He'll get it back. Charche punches it forward. He's taken down. 15 left on the clock. Here comes the Warriors. That one off a of body. Glove down in the neutral zone. Nelson picks it up. Jackson White steps up, makes a hit. Two on one shot. Well, high of the net. Three seconds left. Another shot blocked. And that will do it on senior night. The Saints get a 5-4 victory. 
They sweep the Waldorf Warriors in their first series back on home ice in 2022. What a victory for the Saints here Saturday afternoon. Yeah, you get the win again. It wasn't necessarily the prettiest, but they got the offense rolling. They, they were a little more physical in this game. They came, they matched what Waldorf managed to throw at them. And it was just kind of one of those games to where Maryville couldn't find that insurance goal late. They, they allowed a few power play opportunities to kind of go by the wayside. But as long as you have one more goal than your opponent, that's all that matters when 60 minutes is gone. Yeah, I'm curious what the reaction from Coach Hogan is going to be post-game. I thought after one period, things were going to be all swell. But I think the way this game played out, especially that second period, I don't think he's going to be too thrilled with the way his team's played in these two games. Kind of goes back to what we talked about pregame. If they're not taking on a seven-win Waldorf team, now 10 below 500, this may be a different result. If they're playing one of the other teams in the conference, a very good conference Maryville plays in, I don't think Maryville gets either of these victories. Well, we'll talk about their performance tonight. A 5-4 victory for the Saints on senior night. Don't go anywhere. We're going to give our final thoughts here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. We'll be right back. Hello, America. This is a message for the brave people who want to get a degree online on top of all the other things going on in their lives. The higher education system is broken. 75% of Americans say it's easier to succeed with a degree, but only 25% think the education system is fine the way it is. Something's not right. Here at Maryville University, we've been bravely disrupting the higher education system for nearly 150 years by putting students first, not the other way around. And now we're bringing it online. We believe education is not just about earning a degree, but about pursuing and achieving your dreams. That's why we develop programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. The future belongs to the brave. Let's be brave together. Be brave and learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Todd Panula and Sean Malone. Guys, the Saints win 5-4. to four. They complete the sweep this weekend against the Waldorf Warriors. Not a pretty one by any means. Two close games, but nevertheless, they come out with two victories. Yeah, coming out of the gates, they needed to get two wins. They managed to do that. Uh, going into the series, this isn't necessarily how you would have drawn it up, but it's a conference sweep over a conference opponent. And as long as you're getting victories heading into the conference tournament, hopefully a national championship tournament berth, that's the main thing. They get two points here tonight. They get four points over the weekend and that's really what counts in the standings at the end. At the end of the day, a win is a win is a win is a win. <laughs> Maryville got two of them this weekend. Doesn't matter if it's by a score of 8-1 to one or 5-4, to four, it's still going to go down as two points in the standings and a win in the scorecard. But I really think Maryville's got a lot of things they need to clean up and play with more consistency. We saw that typical high level of play from Maryville in the first period. We didn't see it at all in the second period. Things were better in the third period, but we go back to those power plays that Maryville had. Those were two huge missed opportunities that, with the penalty kill, they put themselves on late in the third period. Could have potentially come back to haunt them. Yeah, and Coach Hogan said before the game, and even last night in his post game, there's not a lot of season left, so they need to get them going here after, uh, well, January is pretty much over, so. You know, one more weekend left of January, but not a lot of time left because the next thing you know, the conference tournament's here and then the national tournament's here. And this team thinks that they can be a national tournament team. We believe they can be a national tournament team. So we'll have to see if Coach Hogan and the rest of the staff can get these guys going. But like we said, a win is a win. They don't ask how, they ask how many. And they, want, they got two wins this weekend. Why don't we look at the stats for this one? 44 shots for the Saints in this game 24 for the warriors 5-4 victory for the saints and getting things going for the saints once again a defenseman activating that's my favorite word for a defenseman this team if they want to win games their defensemen they need to be active within the offensive zone and we saw that a few times throughout the weekend 